everyone. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco, and I'm Erica. And today we're going to be bringing you another great sports lesson. Yes, this one is for all our hockey fans. I know we have a lot of listeners from Russia, so this is a very popular sport in Russia, Czech Republic. Yes. So and Canada and Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Very, very popular in Canada. It's our national game. <laughs> Well, I guess because you guys have so much ice. I know there's nothing else to do. <laughs> Skiing and hockey.、Mm. All right, so it's going to be a really fun lesson. We're going to have a lot of great vocabulary. So before we start in the dialogue, let's take a look at vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. Well, we have three words for you now.、Um, the first one, really simple, puck. 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 P U C K. So it's almost like duck, but、uh-huh. with a p. Yes. And this is actually kind of like the ball that you use in hockey. But it's not a ball. But it's not a ball. It's flat. It's flat. And round. And round.、Mm. So it looks like a disc.、Mm-hmm. Kind of like a mini frisbee. Yes. And this is what the players do. This is what they. They chase this they around. They chase it. Yeah.、Right? So in basketball you have a ball. In soccer you have a ball. In hockey you have a puck. Yep. Okay. Our next word. Key game. A key game. A key game. So this word key. Important. It means important. Really、right? important. Really important. Yeah. So I can say a key game is a really important game. Exactly. You could also maybe say a key player. A key player is a really important player.、Mm-hmm. Or even a key goal. A key goal. Okay. So let's take a look at our last word now. Finals. 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 The finals. So the finals are the last games. That's right.、Um, and the winner of the finals wins the championship. Okay. For example, in the World Cup in soccer,、mm-hmm. there's only one game played in the finals. So after everyone gets eliminated, there is one game where the winner is the champion. Yes. Okay. So now we're ready to listen to our dialogue, and it's going to be a little bit faster than usual.、Mm-hmm. Because it's a sports commentator, right? And it's exciting. And it's exciting,、yeah. and there's a lot of action. So don't worry about it. Listen to it, and then we'll come back and talk about some of the vocabulary. And here with me is Bob Copeland. Howdy, folks, and welcome to today's game. You know, Rick, today's a key game between Russia and Canada. As you know, the winner will move on to the finals. That's right, and it looks like we're just about ready to start the match. The ref is calling the players for the face-off, and here we go. The Russians win possession and immediately start up their attack. Fedorov gets checked hard into the boards. Boris Richard has the puck now, and he passes it to center. He shoots. Wow! What a save by the goalie! All right, the puck is back in play now. Pavel Bure is on a breakaway. He is flying down the ice. The defenders can't keep up. Slap shot. He scores. What an amazing goal! All right, so the Canadians versus the Russians, huh? It reminds me of a classic, classic <laughs> game. <laughs> exactly, the、yeah. classic match. Yep. So let's take a look at some of the vocabulary that we heard in the dialogue in language takeaway. Language takeaway. We have five phrases in language takeaway today,、um, and the first one is face off. Face off. Face off. Face off. So Marco, a face off here is a noun, right? It's a noun,、mm. exactly, and it's so in the beginning of a match, the two players will stand face to face. Yes. Right. That's why it's called kind of a face off.、Mm-hmm. And the referee will drop the puck. Yes. And they'll try to get it. Exactly. So that's the face off. That's the face off. Yep. Okay. Let's take a look at our next word. Check. Check. To check. To check. So an interesting verb here, hey? It, yeah, it's really interesting because it's different from the way that you would say check or revise, right? Yes. Yep. This is actually kind of a violent <laughs> move. Yeah. So、uh, what do you do? So basically, in hockey, you take your body and you hit another person with it. Okay, so to check someone is to 
hit them with your body. With your body, right?、Uh-huh. You can't use your arms or your legs or your hands. You can only hit them like with your shoulder or your or your hip. Yeah. Called a hip check. Okay. So yeah, it's very cool. All right. <laughs> Our next word: goalie. 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 A goalie is a person. Right. And probably the bravest of、yeah. the hockey match. No kidding. So why don't you tell us what the goalie does?、Um, the goalie prevents the puck from coming in the net. From going into the goal, right? Yeah. So the goalie stops the other team from getting a goal. A goal. Yeah. Okay. So the goalie prevents the goals.、Mm-hmm. All right. Very interesting. Now our fourth word is related to goalie. Yes. Save. 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 A、uh, save. A save. Yeah.、Right? It's a noun here. It's a noun here. So the goalie makes saves. That's right. When he stops a goal, he makes a save. Makes a save. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. We have some examples so we can understand this form of using save. Yes. Example one. That was an unbelievable save. Example two. The goalie didn't make the save. Example three. What a save! The Russians win. Yeah, a little bit unusual here that save is a noun instead of a verb, but I think those examples were helpful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now let's take a look at our last word: breakaway. 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 A breakaway. Okay, so you have two words there that we know already: break, yes, right, and away. Yeah. So, what do these two words together actually mean? Well, imagine a group of hockey players all fighting to get the puck,、mm-hmm. right? And then one player breaks off, breaks out、Escapes. of the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he skates down the ice and he has the puck and he's、mm-hmm. far away from the other players. Right, right. So he's. Going away from the other players by himself. Yeah. Okay. So break away.、Mm-hmm. All right. So we've looked at a lot of hockey language here. Yep. And I think it's time now to listen to our dialogue again. This time we're going to slow it down a little bit. Yeah, I think this will help you to understand these words a little bit better. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Fields. And here with me is Bob Copeland. Howdy, folks, and welcome to today's game. You know, Rick, today is a key game between Russia and Canada. As you know, the winner will move on to the finals. That's right, and it looks like we're just about ready to start the match. The ref is calling the players for the face-off, and here we go. The Russians win possession and immediately set up their attack. Fedorov gets checked hard into the boards. Maurice Richard has the puck now and passes it to the center. He shoots! Wow! What a save by the goalie! All right, the puck is back in play now. Pavel Bure is on a breakaway. He is flying down the ice. The defenders can't keep up. Slap shot! He scores! What an amazing goal! Okay, this dialogue is interesting because we have commentators narrating or describing what's happening、yeah, in and, that moment, right? Yeah, and they're using some interesting grammar, aren't they? Exactly, they are because some actions are happening in that moment, but we notice something a little bit strange. All right, well, let's look at it in grammar breakdown. Grammar breakdown. Okay, let's listen to this sentence that we previously heard in the dialogue. Maurice Richard has the puck now. And passes it to the center. He shoots. Maurice Richard has the puck now and passes it to the center. He shoots. I notice that he's using the present simple, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even though the action is now,、mm-hmm. it's in present simple. Yes. Even though the action is happening in that moment, he's not using the present progressive. Or yeah. The present continuous. Yeah. This is because if you notice, the actions are very, very brief and fast, and fast and exciting. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. So you don't really have enough time to say, for example, he is shooting. Yes.、Right? Because 
It's only one quick action. He shoots the puck very fast,、mm-hmm. right? Or for example, you wouldn't really say he is passing. Yeah, he is passing the puck. Right. It's just one quick action. He takes it and passes it, and the action is finished. Yes. I think we can see a few more examples of this.、Um, let's listen again. The Russians win possession and immediately set up their attack. The Russians win possession and immediately set up their attack. Here we can hear that he is using the present simple again because these are very short actions that finish quickly, right? Exactly. And it's actually very, very common when you're describing something you see. Mm-hmm. That's happening now.、Mm-hmm. That's really exciting. It's common to use present simple. Exactly. If you pay attention, most sporting events are in the same way. Yep.、Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they would describe the actions that are happening in the present simple,、yeah. not present progressive. Yeah. But Marco, you have an example of、um, of some present progressive here, right? Yes. Let's listen to this sentence. He is flying down the ice. He is flying down the ice. Now we heard the sentence. He is flying down the ice.、Mm-hmm. Right now, this one is in progressive. Yeah. Why is that? Well, first of all, when we say he's flying down the ice, it's not that he's literally flying. No,、right? he's not an airplane. He's just skating really fast. Yep. Right. So we kind of exaggerate and we say, "Oh, he's flying down the ice," but he's actually skating.、Mm-hmm. So this is a progressive action. So he is doing it. It's happening for more than one second. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why we would say he is flying down the ice instead of he flies down the ice. Yes. Right. Yep. Unless it was like really, really, really fast. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here we see that sometimes in English we do use present simple to talk about what's happening now, right?、Mm-hmm. When it happens really, really quickly,、mm-hmm. or when we want to show that it's really exciting. Exactly. Yep. Makes it much more exciting if we just use the present simple. Yeah. Okay, let's listen to this exciting dialogue one more time, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Fields, and here with me is Bob Copeland. Howdy, folks, and welcome to today's game. You know, Rick. Today's a key game between Russia and Canada. As you know, the winner will move on to the finals. That's right, and it looks like we're just about ready to start the match. The ref is calling the players for the face-off, and here we go. The Russians win possession and immediately start up their attack. Fedorov gets checked hard into the boards. Boris Richard has the puck now, and he passes it to center. He shoots! Wow! What a save by the goalie! All right, the puck is back in play now. Pavel Bure is on a breakaway. He is flying down the ice. The defenders can't keep up. Slap shot. He scores. What an amazing goal! All right. So hockey is the Canadian national sport. Well, actually, it isn't the it national isn't. sport. Yeah. What is it? Lacrosse. Is lacrosse. Our, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we're not. We don't have a lesson about lacrosse today. Not yet. No. Um, but actually, all Canadians love hockey.、Mm-hmm. Like we start playing hockey when we're about two years old. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that、uh, some Canadian children learn how to skate before they learn how to walk. It's totally common. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a great sport. Very, very exciting. It's very fast paced,、mm-hmm. and it's very aggressive. That's what I like about it. I know. Not violent, but very aggressive. Yeah, but you know what, I. Must tell you that I am not a good Canadian.、Um, You're not a hockey fan. No, I'm really.、Not. Yeah, I really, I really hate hockey. Why?、Um, I, you know what? The puck is so small; it's hard to see where it is <laughs> on the ice, and it's cold, and these guys are fighting. And anyway, have you ever been to a hockey game? Yeah, yeah.、Um, many times, and I just find that. The puck is really small. <laughs> Maybe you just need better seats. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, what do you guys think about hockey? We'll post some some videos and some pictures of hockey on on the comment section, so you can more or less see a little bit more about this really interesting sport, and tell us what you think about it. 
Yeah, so visit our website, EnglishPod.com, and you'll find some interesting stuff about hockey, right? Exactly.、Um, and also lots of other great lessons.、Uh, exactly. And also, if you have any questions or doubts about the lesson, you can leave your questions on the site.、Mm-hmm. All right, we're out of time. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening and、Bye. goodbye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Very important. Key. Last game or series of games in a tournament or championship. Finals. Person who makes sure the players follow the rules in a game. Ref. A way of beginning a game by dropping the puck between two players. Face off. Get control. Win possession. Use your body to push someone in hockey. Check. Small, round, black object that is used to play hockey. Puck. The act of preventing a ball or puck from going in the net. Save. Position in hockey. Person who tries to stop the puck from going in the net. Goalie. State of becoming separated from a large group, especially in sports. Breakaway. Ice surface used to play hockey or skate on. Rink. Large building where sports are played. Arena. Long wooden stick shaped like an L used for playing hockey. Hockey stick. National Hockey League, group of professional hockey teams that play in Canada and the U.S. NHL. A group of sports teams that play against each other. League. Let's try that faster. Ice surface used to play hockey or skate on. Rink. National Hockey League, group of professional hockey teams that play in Canada and the U.S. NHL. A group of sports teams that play against each other. League. Large building where sports are played. Arena. Last game or series of games in a tournament or championship. Finals. State of becoming separated from a large group, especially in sports. Breakaway. Very important. Key. A way of beginning a game by dropping the puck between two players. Face off. The act of preventing a ball or puck from going in the net. Save. Get control. Win possession. Small, round, black object that is used to play hockey. Puck. Long wooden stick shaped like an L used for playing hockey. Hockey stick. Person who makes sure the players follow the rules in a game. Ref. Use your body to push someone in hockey. Check. Position in hockey. Person who tries to stop the puck from going in the net. Goalie. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Finals. We lost the game in the finals. It was so disappointing. Finals. Do you think the Oilers will make it to the finals? Finals. My team didn't make it to the finals. Check. 
Smith got checked right into the board. Check. That was the hardest check I've ever seen. Check. Checking is what makes hockey so much fun. Puck. Van Rin has the puck and he's skating towards center ice. Puck. The puck is flying towards the net. Puck. I can't see the puck. Goalie. When I play hockey, I like to play goal. Goalie. We lost because we have a terrible goalie. Goalie. The Canadians have a new goalie this year. Save. That was an unbelievable save. Save. The goalie didn't make the save. Save. What a save! The Russians win. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco, and I'm Erica. And today we're swimming. That's right. A nice summertime lesson a for summertime everyone. Summertime lesson. Uh huh. So we're gonna be talking about swimming, and well, it's a very popular sport, right? Yeah. So this is another lesson in our sports series. In our sports series. Okay. So why don't we preview some of the language we'll find in the dialogue? Vocabulary preview. All right. We have two words to look at here.、Uh, the first word is sailing. 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 Well, this is the verb to sail, right?、Mm -hmm. So, sailing is traveling in a boat. In a boat with no engine. Right. So you must use the wind to push you forward. Exactly. That's a sailboat. Yes. Okay. So sailing.、Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at our other word, anchor. Another boat word here.、Yeah. Anchor. 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 Now. It's spelled A N C H O R. Right. But you don't pronounce the C H as you normally would, right? Another one of these really difficult、uh, <laughs> to spell English words. Right. So you don't say anchor. You would say anchor. 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 So the anchor is a verb and a noun. That's right. Well, when anchor is used as a noun, it means the hook that you throw over the boat into、mm -hmm. the water, and it keeps you. Staying in the same place. Okay, but the verb to anchor. Yes. What does it mean? To do that. To do that, right? <laughs> <Yeah> . So you, so to throw the anchor into the water, you would just say to anchor the boat. Exactly. To keep it in the same place. Okay, great words related to sailing. But now let's listen to our dialogue for the first time. What's what's happening here, Erica? Well, we've got two friends here who are sailing in their boat, and they decide to take a swim.、Mm, let's see what happens. This is such a beautiful day. Great day for sailing. It sure is. The water looks so nice. Anchor the boat for a little while. I'm gonna take a dip. Why are you doggy paddling? I taught you how to swim. Do your breaststroke. I get too tired. I'll just backstroke. It's easier. Try kicking your legs more. That's good. Don't go out too far. It's fine.、Uh, jump in. Kathy, get back here! I see a shark. Ah! Help me! Help! Bring the boat closer. The shark is coming straight towards me. It's right under you, Kathy. All right. So a shark attack. I know this is my worst fear when swimming. <laughs> really, in the in the ocean, right? Yeah. Well, also in the lake, but <laughs> <laughs> no sharks in lakes. I know, but I'm still afraid of them. <laughs> All right, so don't worry about it. I'm sure the girl is okay. 
Uh, it's probably not a shark. Maybe it was a dolphin. Yeah, or maybe she's gonna punch the shark in the face <laughs> and she'll, she'll escape. Okay, let's take a look at some of the words that we saw in Language Takeaway. Language Takeaway. We have three excellent swimming words for you. The first one is doggy paddling. Doggy paddling. Doggy paddling. So, doggy paddling. It's not really a proper way of swimming, right? No, you don't see this in the Olympics. So if you've ever seen a dog swim, mm -hmm. that's why they call it doggy paddling. Right, you're sort of moving your hands quickly in front of you. Mm -hmm. And your legs are all over the place. Yeah. And you're basically not really swimming, you're just trying to stay afloat. You're yes. trying not to drown. Trying not to sink. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so doggy paddling. Again, this can be a noun or a verb. The doggy paddle, mm -hmm. the swimming style, or doggy paddling, the okay, verb. Okay, interesting. Mm. All right, let's take a look at our second uh, swimming style. Breaststroke. 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 The breaststroke. It's How like, is this one? Well, it's sort of like swimming like a frog. So you have your legs that are similar to like a frog, right? Yeah. And what are your hands doing? Um, your hands are moving in front of you together, mm -hmm. then out towards the side. Okay, so, so you're kind of doing like circles. Yeah, half circles. Half circles. Mm -hmm. Okay, breaststroke. Yeah. But you get kind of tired when you swim like this, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, mm. yeah. Now, let's take a look at our third word. Backstroke. 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 So this one's pretty easy. Backstroke, you are... Lying on your back. You're lying on your back. In the water. Mm -hmm. And you're kicking your feet as well. Yep. But what are your hands doing? They're going back behind you. See, I'm, I'm doing it now. Can you see? <laughs> All right. If you guys could be here in the studio, you would see Erica doing her backstroke. Yeah, I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's listen to this dialogue again, and then we'll come back and look at some great phrases. This is such a beautiful day. Great day for sailing. It sure is. The water looks so nice. Anchor the boat for a little while. I'm going to take a dip. Why are you doggy paddling? I taught you how to swim. Do your breaststroke. I get too tired. I'll just backstroke. It's easier. Try kicking your legs more. That's good. Don't go out too far. It's fine. Jump in. Kathy, get back here. I see a shark. Ah! Help me! Help! Bring the boat closer! The shark is coming straight towards me! It's right under you! Kathy! Okay, so we have some really good phrases related to swimming and mm -hmm. water. Yep. Okay, let's take a look at these in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right, the first one. I love this phrase. Um, take a dip. Take a dip. Take a dip. So if I say I'm going to take a dip. You're going to have a quick swim. A quick swim. Yep. So you can take a dip in the pool. Yep. In the lake. In the ocean. In the ocean. Even your, in your bathtub, right? No. No? No, it's just for swimming. <laughs> Unless your bathtub is really, really, really big. All right. So not for the bathtub, but for swimming. Yep. Okay. Now let's take a look at our second phrase. For a little while. For a little while. For a little while. For a little while. This is really common. I use this a lot. Yeah, me too. I probably use it 500 times a day. <laughs> okay, so let's listen to some examples with for a little while, and then we'll come back and explain it. Example one. I'm tired. I'm just going to sit down for a little while. Example two. It will only hurt for a little while. Example three. Do you want to play tennis for a little while? So it means for a short time. For a short time. And you can change it, right? You can say, oh, I'm going to play for a little while. Yeah. Or I'm going to sleep for a little while. Uh -huh. For a short time. Yeah. All right. So if learners use this phrase, um, I find it sounds really, really great because it's, it's not something that students normally use. Yeah, I guess a student wouldn't really use this phrase normally. Yeah. So guys, use it because you'll sound awesome. Yeah, you'll sound really, really fluent. Okay, and let's take a look at our last phrase. Straight towards. 
Straight towards. Straight towards me. Straight towards. Okay, so straight means directly. Right, in a line. In a line, not going anywhere else, but directly. Yeah, not moving side to side. And towards is in that direction.、Mm -hmm. So the shark was coming straight towards me. It's coming directly at me. Moving in a line and not moving side to side. Okay. So can you give me another example of how you would use straight towards? Watch out! There's a car coming straight towards you. Okay. Directly towards you. Yeah. Or maybe、um, when I get home from work, I go straight towards the fridge. Really? Yes. I believe this. <laughs> All right, so straight towards directly. Okay, so we've looked at a lot of great words, really good phrases. Let's listen to this dialogue one last time and then we'll come back. And Eric is going to tell us a really great story about boat. This is such a beautiful day. Great day for sailing. It sure is. The water looks so nice. Anchor the boat for a little while. I'm gonna take a dip. Why are you doggy paddling? I taught you how to swim. Do your breaststroke. I get too tired. I'll just backstroke. It's easier. Try kicking your legs more. That's good. Don't go out too far. It's fine.、Uh, jump in. Kathy, get back here. I see a shark. The shark is coming straight towards me! It's right under you! Kathy! Alright, l well, Marco, I was telling you、um, that I used to spend every summer on the lake.、Mm -hmm. um, and my family had a really small house on a small island.、Mm -hmm. And my cousins had another small house on another small island. Okay. So, our families are really close, and we used to go to one house for dinner one night and the other house to dinner、mm -hmm. the next night. So, everyone was over at my cousin's house, except for my grandfather.、Mm -hmm. um, and so he was thinking, okay, it's late, maybe I better go pick up my wife and see what's going on. So, he goes into the boat. It's dark. Okay. There's no light on the boat.、Mm -hmm. He's driving straight towards the island when suddenly my, my cousin in his boat drives directly into <laughs> my grandfather. So they crashed. They crashed. Two boats crashed in the lake. Yeah, and then my, my grandfather's boat flipped over. It turned upside down. Wow. And he fell in the water. D but, but he was okay, right? Yeah, he was okay. But、um, you know what? He was really angry about this. <laughs> and the boat? The boat stayed in the water, and you know, the, the engine fell down to the bottom.、Oh. So we had to go the next morning to get the boat. And we actually had to、um, hire some scuba divers to go. To the bottom of the lake to get the engine. Wow. Yeah. yeah、um, I imagine your grandpa was pretty angry. Yeah, he tells the story、um, every year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>、um, but you know what? I've got a million of these crazy lake stories because my family. It just, always happens. Yeah.、Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, do you have any crazy stories or any stories related to boats or to swimming? Or to shark attacks? Or shark attacks? Yeah. Uh, so, come to our website, EnglishPod.com. Leave your story, share with us. And also, if you have any doubts or questions, Erica and I are always there to answer. Well, we're out of time for this lesson, but、um, until next time, bye bye. bye. <laughs> the EnglishPod Audio Review Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Travel in a boat that is powered by wind. Sail. For a short amount of time. For a little while. A swim. A dip. Swim like a dog. Doggy paddle. Way of swimming where the person moves the arms and legs in a half circle in front of them. Like a frog. Breaststroke. To swim on your back with arms moving up and down in a circle. Backstroke. 
directly in the direction of something. Straight towards. Clothes you wear when you go swimming. American English. Swimsuit. Clothes you wear when you go swimming. British English. Swimming costume. Piece of soft cloth you use to dry yourself after swimming or bathing. Towel. Lie in the sun and try to make your skin more brown. Tan. Jump into the water with your head first. Dive. Let's try that faster. Directly in the direction of something. Straight towards. Travel in a boat that is powered by wind. Sail. Piece of soft cloth you use to dry yourself after swimming or bathing. Towel. Clothes you wear when you go swimming. British English. Swimming costume. Swim like a dog. Doggy paddle. A swim. A dip. Lie in the sun and try to make your skin more brown. Tan. To swim on your back with arms moving up and down in a circle. Backstroke. For a short amount of time. For a little while. Jump into the water with your head first. Dive. Clothes you wear when you go swimming. American English. Swimsuit. Way of swimming where the person moves the arms and legs in a half circle in front of them, like a frog. Breaststroke. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Sail. I've never been sailing before. Sail. I always get sick when I go sail. Sail. Did you watch the sailing race? Let's anchor the boat. I dropped the anchor over the side of the boat so we won't float away. We can't anchor here because there are power lines under the water. I'm tired. I'm just going to sit down for a while. It will only hurt for a little while. Do you want to play tennis for a little while? It was so hot that we took a dip before lunch. Stephen and Nellie are taking a dip in the lake. Do you want to take a dip in the pool? Straight towards. Swim straight towards the shore. Straight towards. The boat is coming straight towards us. Straight towards. We're driving straight towards the cliff. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're bringing you another great lesson about sports, part of our sports series. That's right. And in this lesson, we are talking about maybe the world's most favorite sport. Right. One of the most popular sports in the world, soccer,、mm -hmm. or also known as football in other countries. Yes. Okay, so before we get started with this great lesson, let's take a look at some of the words we'll find in the dialogue in vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. We're going to look at three words here. The first word is wingman. Wingman. A wingman. Now, wingman isn't really related to soccer in any way. Okay. But it's a way of referring to somebody as your right hand. So, your helper. Your helper, your, your number one guy. Okay. Right? So, a wingman is someone who helps you a lot. Uh huh. 
Exactly. Okay, our next word, tied. Tied. They are tied. They are tied. Now, this is an interesting word because tie can be a noun, verb, and an adjective, right? Exactly. So in this case, they are tied. It's an adjective meaning they have the same score. Okay.、Mm-hmm. And a tie is. Is a game that has ended with no winner or loser. Both of them had the same score. Exactly. And so obviously the verb to tie is to reach the same score as your other team. Exactly. All right. Well, our third word can also be used as a noun and a verb, and it is foul. Fouled. Fouled. Okay. So to foul somebody is to do something to them that is not allowed in the sport. Okay. And so when you do this, you have committed a foul. Exactly. Okay. So. You use it in the same way, to foul or a foul.、Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, we're going to hear these three words in context now. So, why don't we listen to our soccer dialogue? Back, soccer fans. My name is Rick Fields, and as always, I am joined by my commentating wingman Bob Copeland. And we are in the break of soccer history today, as Ecuador and Brazil are tied 1-1 as we begin the second half of the 2022 World Cup. The ref calls the players for the kickoff, and here we go. Ecuador quickly passes the ball to the midfield, but oh, it's out of bounds. That will be a throw in for Brazil. Adriano has the ball and makes a long pass to Robinho. And the ref has called him offside. No question about it. He was offside by a mile. We have a goal kick for Ecuador. Edison Mendez heads it to Valencia. He shoots, deflected by the defender, and we have a corner kick. Delgado takes the corner. We have a foul. Oh no! Dida, the goalkeeper, has fouled the Ecuadorian player. He gets a yellow card, and that will be a penalty kick. This is the perfect opportunity for Ecuador to get ahead in this match and become world champions. He gets ready for the kick. He shoots, and he. Okay, so Ecuador tied with Brazil in the 2022 World Cup. Wow, Marco, I'm really happy to see that you are able to see so far into the future. <laughs> well, I called it. So in、yeah. 2022, if we do win the World Cup. You know who said it first. All right. Do you have money on that?、Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, apart from this, we saw some really great vocabulary in this lesson. So, let's take a look at it now in language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right. We've got a lot of soccer words for you, but they're all important. So, let's take a look at the first one kickoff. 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 So, a kickoff. This is how you start a soccer game, right? Right. So, it's the very beginning, the referee blows the whistle, and you kick the ball to another player. That's the kickoff. Okay. So, our next phrase out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Okay. Out of bounds. This is a great word.、Mm-hmm. So, in soccer, when the ball goes out of bounds, it goes outside the white lines, right? Right. Outside of the playing field. Okay. And you can use it in all other sports. You can use it in basketball, you can use it in、uh, tennis, or football, or anything. Right.、Mm-hmm. So, any part that is not for playing. Out of bounds. What's our next word? Throw in. A throw in. A throw in. Okay. So, A throw in. The ball goes out of bounds.、Uh-huh. How do you put it back into play? Obviously, a throw in. Okay, so you throw in the ball. That's the only time where a soccer player will actually grab the ball with his hands. All right, now another soccer term we have here offside. 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 Okay, so this is a little bit difficult to explain, but just imagine you're on the soccer field、uh-huh. and You are trying to score a goal.、Okay. Now you have some defenders, right? right? Those are the people who are trying to take the ball away. And you pass the ball to somebody who is behind the defenders. Oh, and that person is offside. Exactly. So you must be at all times in the same position as the defenders or in front of them, but you can't be all the way in the back. Okay, so is this a noun or a verb or an adjective? 
So this is an adjective. He is offside. That's his condition. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Excellent explanation, Marco. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to look at three different phrases for three types of kicks in soccer. Okay. So let's take a look at this. The first one is goal kick. A goal kick. Okay, goal kick. So who does the goal kick? It's usually the goalie or the goalkeeper who, right. who takes the goal kick. Okay, so when the goalie kicks the ball. Mm -hmm. Now what about a corner kick? Okay, so if the team is attacking and the ball goes out of bounds mm -hmm. in the back area near the goal, then they get a corner kick. They got to kick the ball from the corner of the field. This is a great chance to score a goal, isn't it? Exactly, yes. Okay, and our final kick, a penalty kick. Penalty kick. Penalty kick. So if a player gets fouled while he is in the area near the goal, okay. he gets a penalty kick. So basically it's just him. I think it's 13 or 15 steps away from the goalie. Mm-hmm. And he gets the opportunity to score or to kick the ball. So there are no defenders or other players in the way. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Wow. Another great chance to score a goal. Right. All right. Well, these are all great soccer words. and I think we should hear them again in context. So let's listen this time a little bit slower. Welcome back, soccer fans. My name is Rick Fields. And as always... I am joined by my commentating wingman, Bob Copeland. And we're on the brink of soccer history today, as Ecuador and Brazil are tied 1-1, as we begin the second half of the 2022 World Cup. The ref calls the players for the kickoff, and here we go. Ecuador quickly passes the ball to the midfield, but... Oh, it's out of bounds. That will be a throw-in for Brazil. Adriano has the ball and makes a long pass to Rubinho. And the ref has called him offside. No question about it. He was offside by a mile. We have a goal kick for Ecuador. Edison Mendes heads it to Valencia. He shoots. Deflected by the defender, and we have a corner kick. Delgado takes the corner. Ah, we have a foul. Oh, no. Dida, the goalkeeper, has fouled the Ecuadorian player. He gets a yellow card, and that will be a penalty kick. This is the perfect opportunity for Ecuador to get ahead in this match and become world champions. He gets ready for the kick. He shoots. And he... All right, so we heard these words that we were talking about in context, and now some really interesting phrases came up, and uh, this would be a good time to take a look at them in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Well, Marco, there are three great phrases in this dialogue that I want to look at. Um, the first one, on the brink of. We are on the brink of. We're on the brink of soccer history. Okay, so... On the brink of, what is it, what exactly does that mean? Well, why don't we hear some examples to help us understand the meaning? Example one. Look, we don't have any money. We're on the brink of going bankrupt. Example two. The two countries are on the brink of war. Example three. We're on the brink of an important discovery. All right, so great examples on the brink of, at a critical point. Exactly. It means you're almost there, right? Okay, yeah, very good. And what about this next phrase that I saw, and it was really interesting. No question about it. No question about it. No question about it. No question about it. All right, so this is a statement that doesn't really make much sense. But what am I saying when I say, oh, no question about it? You're saying... I agree. There is no doubt. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's give some examples. I could say, there's no question about it. Ecuador is a great soccer team. <laughs> there is no question <laughs> yeah. about that. All right. So, or you can say, no question about it. Our company makes the best products on the market. Okay. So really useful phrase that you can use in sports or anywhere else. Okay. 
And now let's take a look at our last phrase for Fluency Builder, and it's a really good one to exaggerate a little bit. Okay. By a mile. By a mile. By a mile. So he was offside by a mile. Right. So the commentator is saying that he was very offside. That it was really obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can use that also in different contexts, maybe not in sports. Okay. So maybe we can say... Our company is ahead of all the others by a mile. Right. Or if you tell somebody to guess your age and they say, oh, I think you are 42. Oh, you could say you're off by a mile. Right. right. So you're really, really wrong. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a way of exaggerating a little bit. Yes. And saying it's really obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, three awesome phrases. And I think it will help us to hear them one more time. So let's listen to the dialogue. soccer fans my name is rick fields and as always i am joined by my commentating wingman bob copeland and we're in the break of soccer history today as ecuador and brazil are tied 1-1 as we begin the second half of the 2022 world cup the ref calls the players for the kickoff and here we go ecuador quickly passes the ball to the midfield but oh it's out of bounds that will be a throw in for brazil adirano has the ball and makes a long pass to Robinho. And the ref has called him offside. No question about it. He was offside by a mile. We have a goal kick for Ecuador. Edison Mendez heads it to Valencia. He shoots. Deflected by the defender. And we have a corner kick. Delgado takes the corner. We have a foul. Oh, no. Dida, the goalkeeper, has fouled the Ecuadorian player. He gets a yellow card, and that will be a penalty kick. This is the perfect opportunity for Ecuador to get ahead in this match and become world champions. He gets ready for the kick, he shoots, and he... Okay, well, as you all may know, soccer is a very popular sport, especially in Latin America. That's right. And your favorite team, Ecuador. Are they, <laughs> are they really this good in soccer? Are they really going to win the 2022 <laughs> Cup? Well... Maybe not. Well, actually, Ecuador has has improved with time, but usually it's the strong teams like Argentina and Brazil who uh, dominate the region, right? Right. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll make it next time. Okay, well, I have my money on Ecuador. and <laughs> For 2022. But yeah, not on Canada. There's no <laughs> hope for us. Well, Canada is doing really well now. They really? actually uh, beat Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, actually, that sort of, yeah, I kind of remember that now. <laughs> but there's, I think there's no hope for us to beat Brazil or Argentina, one of these big countries. We have the next World Cup coming up, so it's really exciting, and I don't know who's going to win. All right, well... Um, Listeners, who do you think is going to win? Who is the best soccer team out there? <laughs> right. There are really good soccer teams, although some of our some countries aren't really known for their soccer, like Russia. You don't really hear too much soccer from Russia. Really? Or from China is for that. I wonder how popular it is in these countries. Mm. So let us know. Come to our website, EnglishPod.com. Tell us how popular soccer is in your country or what team you are a fan of. I know many people like the European Cups and they're fans of uh, uh, Barcelona or the Italian teams. Well, come to the website. Marco and I are always around to answer your questions. And until next time, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> the English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Wingman. On the brink. Tied. Kickoff. Throw in. No question about it. By a mile. Foul. Penalty kick. Goal kick. 
corner kick. Out of bounds. Offside. Goalkeeper. Defender. Match. Pitch. Championship. Let's try that faster. Kickoff. Defender. Goal kick. On the brink. Wingman. Penalty kick. Championship. Offside. Goalkeeper. No question about it. Out of bounds. Match. Tied. By a mile. Pitch. Throw in. Foul. Corner kick. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. On the brink. Look, we don't have any money. We're on the brink of going bankrupt. On the brink. The two countries are on the brink of war. On the brink. We are on the brink of an important discovery. No question about it. No question about it, Ecuador has a great soccer team. No question about it. There's absolutely no question about it. That was the best game of the series. No question about it. There's no question about it. We're in a recession now. By a mile. He missed the goal by a mile. By a mile. No, that's wrong. You're off by a mile. By a mile. The competition is ahead of us by a mile. We tied the game at 3-3. What an amazing game. It's a tie. We're tied for first place. Foul. Hey, ref, that was a foul. Foul. Did you see that? Delgado fouled him as he tried to take a shot. Foul. The Brazilian player has several fouls. Hello everyone, welcome back to another great lesson here with us at English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're going to be in one of my favorite sporting events, which is 
F1, of F1 course. F1 racing, yeah. all right. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about racing, specifically F1, which is a very popular sport all over the world. Yeah, I think maybe it's like number two in popularity after soccer. Yeah, I think so. Well, I have no numbers to back that up, though. <laughs> well, they do travel everywhere. They have races all over the world, and just people love it. So, Well, it is kind of a cool thing. It Well, going 300 kilometers per hour in a car is pretty cool. All right, so let's not delay this any longer. Let's listen to our dialogue for the first time. Welcome back, racing fans. My name is Rick Fields, and as always, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Bob Copeland. We're in the last stretch of this very exciting race, and Kimi Raikkonen is leading the pack with only four laps to go. They're heading to turn three, and Lewis Hamilton tries to pass Raikkonen. It's a close one, and oh no! Hamilton hits the wall. He came in too fast, jammed on the brakes, and spun out. We have yellow flag, and the pace car is making its way into the track. The cleanup crew is towing the heavily damaged car, and the green flag drops. Ray Conan is still in the lead with only two laps to go. Smoke is coming out of his car! He seems to be having engine trouble. He makes his way under the pit, and Fernando Alonso takes the lead! How unlucky for Raikkonen, and this race is over, ladies and gentlemen. Alonso takes the checkered flag. What an exciting race. I always love a good crash when it comes to car races. <laughs> I think many people go to races expecting to see a crash. Mm. They don't want to see people getting hurt. No, but a little bit of... Like uh, the emotion of just car crashes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, a little a little explosion here and there. <laughs> All right. So now we saw some really exciting language related to racing. So why don't we look at that now in language takeaway? Language takeaway. All right. So we were talking about that crash. And I think what led to the crash was the driver jammed on the brakes. Right. He jammed on the brakes. To jam on the brakes. Okay. Now, if I jam on the brakes... You push the brakes really, really hard and really quickly and really suddenly. Right. So you jam on the brakes and you stop very quickly. So Lewis Hamilton jammed on the brakes and consequently spun out. To spin out. Okay. In the present, it would be spin out. Spin out. Okay. So... Imagine yourselves driving your car mm -hmm. on a very wet road. And then you jam on the brakes. Right. So then the car, you kind of lose control of the car and it starts to spin. It goes in circles. Uh -huh. That would be to spin out. Mm, this has actually happened to me more than once. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Were you okay? Yeah, yeah, I was fine. I was fine. Okay. So the car spun out. Now... In racing, you always see this really cool car come out and be ahead of everyone when there's an accident. Right. That's called the pace car. The pace car. Pace car. Now, why is it called the pace car? Because it sets the pace. Okay, the pace or the speed. Mm -hmm. So pace means speed. Uh-huh. So this car comes out and no other car can pass it. Everyone must go at the same speed. Right, the pace car. Pace car. All right, so after there's an accident... The cleanup crew must come out. Okay, cleanup crew. Cleanup crew. All right, so crew, this is an interesting word. Mm -hmm. When we talk about a crew, we talk about a group of people who work together. Okay, but for example, in an office, can I have a crew? Not really. Not commonly, right? Yeah, it's people who work together and they use their hands to work. They do manual labor. Okay, so I can say, for example, a construction crew. That's right. Or maybe the ground crew at the airport. Okay, or the flight crew. Also at the airport. All right. Well, in the airplane. <laughs> so that's a crew. Mm -hmm. So cleanup crew. Cleanup crew. Now, they came out to take that car away, that broken or damaged vehicle. So they were towing it. Tow? Okay, the verb to tow. To tow. So what does it mean when you tow something or you tow a car? You pull something behind you. So mm -hmm. uh, if you're a truck, that mm -hmm. might pull a car behind you. That's a tow truck. A tow truck. Mm -hmm. Now this happens commonly if you park your vehicle where you are not supposed to. That's right. Um, and your car will get towed. Your car gets towed. Yep. Very good. 
All right, so we saw five really great words related to racing. And now, why don't we listen to our dialogue again, and then we'll look at some other interesting phrases. Welcome back, race fans. My name is Rick Fields, and as always, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Bob Copeland. We're in the last stretch of this very exciting race, and Kimi Raikkonen is leading the pack with only four laps to go. They are heading to turn three, and Lewis Hamilton tries to pass Raikkonen. It's a close one, and oh no, Hamilton hits the wall. He came in too fast, jammed on the brakes, and spun out. We have a yellow flag, and the pace car is making its way onto the track. The cleanup crew is towing the heavily damaged car, and the green flag drops. Raikkonen is still in the lead with only two laps to go. Smoke is coming out of his car. He seems to be having engine trouble. He makes his way into the pit, and Fernando Alonso takes the lead. How unlucky for Raikkonen. And this race is over, ladies and gentlemen. Alonso takes the checkered flag. Okay, so now we're back, and I think it's time for us to take a look at some phrases in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Well, even though we're talking about F1 racing, a lot of the language can be used in many different situations. So let's look at some of those phrases now. When Rick Fields introduced his co-host, he said, My partner in crime. Partner in crime. Partner in crime. Now, it's not that they're actually committing a crime. No, right? they're not actually bank robbers. But it's a very common and friendly way of saying my good friend or my... The person I do everything with. Right, my co-worker, for yeah. example, right? But a co-worker who's a really, really good friend, who you spend a lot of time with. Okay, so that's your partner in crime. Mm -hmm. It's just a metaphor, right? So, partner in crime. Now, what about the next phrase? The last stretch. The last stretch. Last stretch. Okay, before we explain this word, let's listen to some examples and then we'll come back and talk about it. Example one. We are finally in the last stretch of a very long week. I can't wait to go home. Example two. He's in the last stretch of his college years and soon he'll graduate. Okay, so I understand that to mean like the final length of time. Right, the last or final moments before an ending. All right, so the last stretch. The last stretch. Now, when you're on the last stretch, you just have a few minutes to go. To go. Yeah, to go. Now, this preposition to and the verb go is <laughs> very easy, right? Right. But if you say five minutes to go, what does that mean? Five minutes left. Left. Yep. It doesn't mean it's five minutes to actually leave, right? Right. No, it means you, you must complete five minutes before you can be finished. Okay. So it's not about exiting. Right. I have five days to go before I go on vacation. So it's not about you actually going on the vacation. It's about you passing those five days. Uh-huh. Can you give us another example? How about we have 45 minutes to go before the end of the day? <laughs> That's right. So to go, left. Exactly, to go. All right, now let's take a look at our last phrase. Close one. A close one. A close one. All right, another interesting phrase made up of simple words. So let's listen to some examples to help us understand it. Example one. That was a close one. The teacher almost caught me cheating. Example two. It's a close one. We are tied and the game is almost over. Example three. My girlfriend almost found the presents I hid under the bed. It was a close one. Okay, so a close one, it means... A situation that is almost dangerous... But wasn't. But wasn't. Yeah. Exactly. That was a close one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So very good phrases. I think we can take a lot from this and apply it outside of F1, right? Yeah. All right. So let's listen to the dialogue for the last time, and then we'll come back and talk about this great sport. Welcome 
Welcome back, racing fans. My name is Rick Fields, and as always, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Bob Copeland. We're in the last stretch of this very exciting race, and Kimi Raikkonen is leading the pack with only four laps to go. They're heading to turn three, and Lewis Hamilton tries to pass Raikkonen. It's a close one, and oh no! Hamilton hits the wall. He came in too fast, jammed on the brakes, and spun out. We have yellow flag, and the pace car is making its way into the track. The cleanup crew is towing the heavily damaged car, and the green flag drops. Ray Conan is still in the lead with only two laps to go. Smoke is coming out of his car! He seems to be having engine trouble. He makes his way under the pit, and Fernando Alonso takes the lead! How unlucky for Raikkonen, and this race is over, ladies and gentlemen. Alonso takes the checkered flag. All right, so F1 Racing, Erica, do you like it? Do you watch it? Um, yeah, F F1's pretty pretty neat. Um, you know, cars that drive fast, that's uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> well, for some people it isn't, right? Like, why do I want to go to a race and just see fast cars? Okay, I would never go to a race, but I think it's... I would maybe watch the highlights on TV. <laughs> well, actually, this year it's really exciting because, again, we're going to have a night race. I think it's in Malaysia or somewhere in Asia that, that they're going to race at night. Oh, so that's pretty special, huh? <laughs> well, it's like harder to see and you're going really <laughs> oh, fast. All right. Imagine. All right. So I hear you're going to the F1 this year. <laughs> yes. This year I'm going to go to the Shanghai circuit to watch the F1 race. So I'm really excited about that. I haven't ever been to one, so it should be fun. All right. Well, I hope you get to see some interesting things like car crashes and <laughs> pace cars. And, yeah. Yeah. What about you guys, our listeners? Are you fans of F1? Have you ever been to an F1 race? Exactly. Send us your questions and comments and uh, also your stories. I think we have listeners from all over the world. We have a lot of listeners in Brazil and I know that there is a Grand Prix there. So tell us, how did, you, how did it go? Do you like it? You can visit us at EnglishPod.com where Marco and I are around to answer your questions. All right. Any Canadian race car drivers? Oh, uh, yeah, there was one recently. Someone, some, something. <laughs> All right, maybe our <laughs> users know which one is the Canadian. So we'll see you guys there. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. A person you always do things together with. Partner in crime. The final time period. Stretch. Left to complete. To go. Hit or step on the brakes quickly and forcefully. Jam on the brakes. A car slides and makes a turn rapidly in an uncontrolled way. Spin out. The car used when accidents happen which leads other cars but is not a competitor in the race. Pace car. The sign used in an F1 race to show that there is an accident on some part of the track. Yellow flag. The group of people who clean up the track. Cleanup crew. The sign used in an F1 race to show that the race is now back to the normal state. Green flag. To be the first in position. Take the lead. A flag with black and white squares showing someone has won. Checkered flag. Cause an engine to run very quickly. Rev. The status of winning a championship in a sport. Title. The quality of moving easily through the air. Aerodynamic. A person who loves cars and racing. American English. Motorhead. The race that determines who will be able to participate in the main race. 
qualifying round. The front position in a car race. Pole position. Let's try that faster. Cause an engine to run very quickly. Rev. The sign used in an F1 race to show that there is an accident on some part of the track. Yellow flag. Left to complete. To go. The race that determines who will be able to participate in the main race. Qualifying round. A person who loves cars and racing. American English. Motorhead. To be the first in position. Take the lead. The status of winning a championship in a sport. Title. The quality of moving easily through the air. Aerodynamic. The group of people who clean up the track. Cleanup crew. The car used when accidents happen, which leads other cars, but is not a competitor in the race. Pace car. A flag with black and white squares showing someone has won. Checkered flag. The front position in a car race. Pole position. Hit or step on the brakes quickly and forcefully. Jam on the brakes. The sign used in an F1 race to show that the race is now back to the normal state. Green flag. A car slides and makes a turn rapidly in an uncontrolled way. Spin out. A person you always do things together with. Partner in crime. The final time period. Stretch. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Jam on the brakes. You shouldn't jam on the brakes suddenly while driving. You can lose control of your car. Jam on the brakes. He was really angry and jammed on the brakes and ordered me to get out of the car. Jam on the brakes. There was an accident right in front of me. Luckily, I jammed on the brakes and was able to avoid it. That was a close one. The teacher almost caught me cheating. It's a close one. We are tied and the game is almost over. My girlfriend almost found the presents I hid under the bed. It was a close one. To go. Only three days to go, and then we are going on vacation. To go. I have another 15 minutes to go before I can go home. To go. I'm so excited. Only one month to go until my new baby is born. I managed to make my way through the crowd and go into the concert. There was a lot of security at the concert, but I managed to make my way onto the stage. She was able to make her way onto the train.
You can't park here or your car will be towed by the police. My car broke down last night, so I had to call someone to come and tow my car. I can't believe they towed my car away. I was parked there for only a few minutes. Hello English learners, welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're bringing you another lesson on our sports series. Mm -hmm. We're talking about baseball today. Baseball, the American national pastime. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. So we're going to be looking at this interesting sport that is played mainly in the Caribbean. And well, it's actually very popular in the United States and Japan. That's right. Korea. Yep. So we're not only going to learn a bunch of baseball language, but we're also going to see how baseball has a big influence on English in general. That's right. So we're going to learn a lot of great things today. So why don't we start and listen to our dialogue? Hello, baseball fans, and welcome back to today's game. My name is Rick Fields, and of course, I am here once again with the man that seals the deal, Bob Copeland. It's a beautiful day to see two world-class teams face each other and fight for their right to be called champions. Well, the national anthem has just been sung, and the umpire has started the game. It's time to play ball! Roger Vargas is up at bat. Pitcher winds up and strike one. Very nice curveball by the pitcher. The catcher gives him the sign. He winds up. And Vargas gets a line drive. The players are scrambling to get the ball. Vargas gets to first base, and he's still going. The outfielder throws it to second. Vargas slides. He's safe. Great play. We have a runner on third, and up at bat is Brian Okami. There's the pitch. He hits it. It's going, going. That ball is gone. Home run by Okami. That puts this team ahead by two as we are at the bottom of the fifth inning here at Ritchie Stadium. All right, well, a pretty exciting game there at Ritchie Stadium. <laughs> exactly, and we have some interesting players, Roger Vargas and Brian Okami. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so, well, we saw some great words, and, well, it's time for us to take a look at them now in Language Takeaway. Language Takeaway. Okay, we're going to look at some uh, common sports and baseball words here. Now, the first phrase, we'll hear this almost at any sort of international sports event, right? Exactly. And it's the national anthem. National anthem. National anthem. So this is a song, right? Exactly. It's the song that you sing about your country. And many people confuse it, right? Yeah, a lot of people might say national hymn. Okay, hymn. Because in some languages, it might be like a hymn, mm -hmm. like literally translating. Yeah. But in English, it's called the national anthem. The national anthem. All right. So what about our next word? Well, we were talking about the pitcher. Pitcher. P-I-T-C-H-E-R. The pitcher. Pitcher. Okay. And now this is one of the players on a baseball team, and his job is to? To throw the ball. To throw the ball really fast. So that the guy can hit it with the bat. <laughs> okay. So that's the pitcher. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is that the baseball commentator said the pitcher winds up winds up to wind up to wind up okay well let me paint you a picture okay so imagine a clock uh-huh and you're turning turning and turning the clock to wind it up to get it ready to go to make it work exactly mm -hmm. so imagine the pitcher doing the same sort of thing bringing his arm back behind him getting ready to throw the ball okay so that is to wind up mm-hmm very good. So you can use this word not only in baseball, but for other things that require you to do this action. Right, to turn something and get it get it ready to have lots of power. Like some toys yep. or maybe like a, a music box. Mm -hmm. Okay, wind up. What about our next phrase? Well, Roger Vargas hit a line drive. Line drive. Line drive. Okay, so 
What is a line drive? Well, it's a term from baseball, and when you hit a line drive, you hit the ball sort of low mm -hmm. on towards the ground, and it, it travels along the outside of the field. Right, so the ball basically travels along the foul line. Mm -hmm, that white line. The white line, yep. exactly. Very good, so that's a line drive. And so the players on the field were scrambling to get the ball. Scrambling. Scrambling. Now, we know scrambled eggs from one of our lessons. Yes, um, but the verb to scramble means to um, move quickly in a disorganized way to do something. Okay, so the players are moving very fast, trying to get the ball, but they're not doing it very well. Right, and you can use this in other ways, right? Not just in baseball. Right, for example, we can say... The people are scrambling to buy their tickets for the concert. Yeah. Or I'm going on vacation tomorrow and I'm scrambling to get everything ready. Exactly. It's a very good term that you can use also in your daily life. Exactly. All right. And what about our last word for today on Language Takeaway? Well, they were in the fifth inning of the game. Okay. So inning. 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 All right. This is another baseball term. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it, it just means the period of play. Okay, so we learned, for example, that in soccer you have two halves. Mm -hmm. Or in hockey you have three periods. All right. And in baseball you have nine innings. Okay, great. So some interesting sports and baseball vocabulary. Now, I think it will help us to hear this again slower. So let's listen to the dialogue. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome back to today's game. My name is Rick Fields, and of course, I am here once again with the man that seals the deal, Bob Copeland. It's a beautiful day to see two world-class teams face each other and fight for their right to be called champions. Well, the national anthem has just been sung, and the umpire has started the game. It's time to play ball. Roger Vargas is up at bat. The pitcher winds up and strike one. A very nice curveball by the pitcher. The catcher gives him the sign. He winds up and Vargas gets a line drive. The players are scrambling to get the ball. Vargas gets to first base and he's still going. The outfielder throws it to second. Vargas slides. He's safe. Great play. We have a runner on third, and up at bat is Brian Okami. There's the pitch. He hits it. It's going, going. That ball is gone. Home run by Okami. That puts this team ahead by two, as we are at the bottom of the fifth inning here at Ritchie Stadium. All right, so as we said, there are a lot of English terms that come from baseball, but we use them in business context or in your daily life, right? Yeah, why don't we look at those now in Fluency Builder? Fluency Builder. All right, so the first phrase that we have is up to bat. Up to bat. Up to bat. So literally, in this dialogue, it means the guy is standing on home plate ready to hit the ball, right? Right. He has the bat and he's ready to hit it. But what about in other contexts? So for example, you can be at a meeting mm -hmm. and maybe it's your turn to talk. So you're up to bat. So the Yeah, exactly. Your boss will say, okay, Erica, you're up to bat. Okay, so it means sort of like it's your turn. It's your turn. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's another term that is used in baseball, but very commonly used in other circumstances. So we also saw um, in the dialogue that Roger Vegas, um, he hit the ball, but he missed, and that was strike one. Right, strike one. Mm -hmm. So in baseball, you have three strikes. Three tries. Three tries before you're out. Yes. And so now the same thing happens in daily life. So um, if someone says, that was strike one. It means you made the first mistake. Yes. And if you make two more, you will be fired, for maybe. example. Yep. Uh -huh. Or maybe your parents will say, okay, you, that wasn't nice. Strike one. And then two more times and you'll have a timeout. Or you'll be grounded. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that's also called a strike. And the pitcher threw a curve ball. A curve ball. Curve ball. So, okay, pretty clear. A curveball is when you throw the ball and it sort of goes in a curve. It doesn't go straight, right? Right, exactly. But how can this be used outside of baseball? So, 
you can say, oh, my boss threw me a curveball today. So he gave you an unexpected problem. Uh huh. Or something that was difficult to handle. Okay.、Um, this one is pretty interesting. I'd like to hear a few more examples. Example one. My boss threw me a curveball today, so I have to stay and work late. Example two. It was a huge curveball when she asked me how many kids I wanted to have. How am I supposed to know? All right, so that's basically a curveball. You can say an unexpected problem or、yep. situation. That's right. And our last phrase, and well, probably one that you already know home run. A home run. A home run. From baseball, we know that that's when you hit the ball really far. And you hit it outside of the, of the playing area or outside the park. Yes. And now, if you use it in a business context or in your daily life,、mm-hmm. it means something similar. Why don't we take a listen to the examples and see if we can figure it out? Example one Great job on that sales presentation. You really hit a home run. Example two Our sales team hit a home run this month by doubling our revenue. Okay, so basically, a home run is a success. A victory. A victory. Yeah, something, a big accomplishment. That's right. So, we've seen a lot of these great phrases. And as you can see, a lot of them from baseball are used in your daily life. And there are many, many more. Okay, well, why don't we hear them again in the baseball context? And we'll listen to the dialogue one more time. Baseball fans, and welcome back to today's game. My name is Rick Fields, and of course, I am here once again with the man that seals the deal, Bob Copeland. It's a beautiful day to see two world class teams face each other and fight for their right to be called champions. Well, the national anthem has just been sung, and the umpire has started the game. It's time to play ball. Roger Vargas is up at bat. Pitcher winds up and strike one. Very nice curveball by the pitcher. The catcher gives him the sign. He winds up. And Vargas gets a line drive. The players are scrambling to get the ball. Vargas gets to first base and he's still going. The outfielder throws it to second. Vargas slides. He's safe. Great play. We have a runner on third, and up at bat is Brian Okami. There's the pitch. He hits it. It's going, going. That ball is gone. Home run by Okami. That puts this team ahead by two as we are at the bottom of the fifth inning here at Ritchie Stadium. All right, so an interesting dialogue, a very interesting sport.、Mm-hmm. And well, personally, I never played this as a child. Uh, me neither, really. I don't really like it too much, but it is kind of fun to go to a game, and especially in the United States, have those hot dogs and all that okay, stuff. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, a cultural event, a really important piece of American culture. Exactly. So, well, we encourage you to come to our website, EnglishPod.com. Tell us what you think, and also, of course, if you have questions or doubts, be sure to tell us. If you have any other sort of baseball related phrases, let us know about them on the website. Okay, so we'll see you guys there. Thanks for downloading, and until next time, goodbye. Bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Ranking with the best in the whole world. World class. The song that represents a country and that is played in ceremonies. National anthem. A person who controls and judges a baseball game. Umpire. Get ready to hit the ball. Up at bat. Get the energy to throw the ball. Wind up. A ball thrown on a curve, not straight, that is hard to hit. Curve ball. 
the player who throws the ball to the batter. Pitcher. The player behind home plate who catches the ball without being hit. Catcher. A hit that travels low along the baseline. Line drive. Do something quickly and in a disorganized way. Scramble. A player who plays in the area that is relatively far from the pitch. Outfielder. Successfully gets to the base. Safe. A hit that strikes the ball out of the field. Home run. A set of baseball containing a turn at bat and a turn in field for each side. Inning. The next in line to do something. Up to bat. An approximate number. Ballpark figure. To do something very well or very successfully. Hit it out of the park. Immediately, without delay. Off the bat. An unusual, crazy, or eccentric person. Screwball. Let's try that faster. Immediately, without delay. Off the bat. The song that represents a country and that is played in ceremonies. National anthem. The player behind home plate who catches the ball without being hit. Catcher. Get ready to hit the ball. Up at bat. A ball thrown on a curve, not straight, that is hard to hit. Curve ball. An approximate number. Ballpark figure. To do something very well or very successfully. Hit it out of the park. A hit that strikes the ball out of the field. Home run. Ranking with the best in the whole world. World class. Do something quickly and in a disorganized way. Scramble. A player who plays in the area that is relatively far from the pitch. Outfielder. The next in line to do something. Up to bat. A set of baseball containing a turn at bat and a turn in field for each side. Inning. A hit that travels low along the baseline. Line drive. An unusual, crazy, or eccentric person. Screwball. Successfully gets to the base. Safe. The player who throws the ball to the batter. Pitcher. A person who controls and judges a baseball game. Umpire. Get the energy to throw the ball. Wind up. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. World class. That was a world class performance that the actors displayed tonight. World class. We are building a world class management team. World class.
Our company aspires to be world-class leaders in IT development. Curveball. My boss threw me a curveball today, so I have to stay and work late. Curveball. It was a huge curveball when she asked me how many kids I wanted to have. How am I supposed to know? Curveball. I've been thrown so many curveballs this month with this new project. I can't take it anymore. Great job on that sales presentation. You really hit a home run. Our sales team hit a home run this month by doubling our revenue. Janice hit a home run today with her great dissertation on consumer psychology. Our team is ahead by five points. We are going to win. That runner is ahead of everyone else by more than two minutes. Our sales team is ahead by more than $1,000 on this month's target sales. Scramble. I woke up late today and had to scramble to work as fast as I could. Scramble. When Mike's cat got lost, we all scrambled around the neighborhood looking for him. Scramble. I saw a mouse in the kitchen, but he scrambled under the stove before I could catch it. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're bringing you another part of our sports series. And today we're going to be talking about volleyball. That's right. And we're going all the way to New Zealand to visit the men's volleyball championships. So we're going to be looking at some great words and phrases related to volleyball and also how to describe a sporting event. So before we start on the dialogue, let's take a look at two words on vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. All right, we're going to hear both of these words in the dialogue. Now, the first one, encounter. Encounter. An exciting encounter. All right, so if we have an exciting encounter, it means we have an exciting... Meeting of two people or two teams or two groups. If I say I had an incredible encounter last night with my best friend... Um, you met up your best friend with your best friend and something happened. Okay. So that's what an encounter would mean. Yes. Looking at our second word now, powerhouse. Two powerhouse teams. All right. So we have two powerhouse teams, China and Brazil. That's right. So a powerhouse team is basically a strong, powerful, really energetic, great team, right? Okay. So we can use it for teams such as in this case, but we can also describe maybe a company or a person as yep. a powerhouse. That guy is a powerhouse. He can lift 500 pounds. Now I think it's time for us to listen to our dialogue for the first time. We're going to be listening to this great sporting event as we are taken to New Zealand to see China and Brazil play. It's a beautiful day here in New Zealand at the Men's Volleyball World Championship. My name is Rick Fields and I'm joined by the man of the plan, Bob Copeland. Thank you, Rick. We've got a very exciting encounter ahead of us today as two powerhouse teams, Brazil and China, face off against each other and try to qualify for the next round. Without a doubt, both teams are in top shape, and this will prove to be a competitive match. 
The ref signals the start of the game, and here we go. Ribeiro serves, and China quickly receives the ball. Chun bumps it to the setter, and a very nice set by Chun. Xu spikes it. Wow, what a great hit. The Brazilian blockers anticipated the play and tried to block him, but he managed to get the ball in. Great play. It's China service now. What a superb jump serve by Lee. Oh, oh, and we have a let serve. The ball was coming in fast and almost made it over the net. Brazil calls for a timeout and we'll be right back after a short commercial break. Well, sounds like a pretty exciting encounter between these two countries. Very good teams, and both of them, as they mentioned, are powerhouse teams. Well, why don't we take a look at some of the vocabulary that we came across in this dialogue. We're going to be focusing on volleyball words here in Language Takeaway. Language Takeaway. Okay, so in Language Takeaway today, we're going to have six words. And let's start with the first one. Chen bumps it to the setter. All right, to bump. All right, so in volleyball, when you are going to receive the ball, mm -hmm. you put your arms together and you hit it with your forearms. That's right, so at the top of your arm. Right, and that's how you pass it to another player. That's called a bump. So it is a noun and a verb, a bump to bump. Exactly. Now, another type of uh, way to move the ball in volleyball we heard in the dialogue is a set. A very nice set by Chen. So a set or two set. Right. The word can be used as a verb and a noun. And again, you take the ball and you move it with the tips of your fingers. That is actually done by the setter. Right. That is done by the setter, and he does this, he sets the ball, so then the attacker can spike the ball. So that's our next word, to spike. So, to spike the ball... Or a spike. ...is when you hit the ball very hard and very fast with the palm of your hand. That's right. And that's how you score your points, right? Exactly. So, you'll see three basic moves, the bump, set, and spike. But what about the serve? All right, so our fourth word in volleyball is service. So it's China's service now. Right. So the service is the opportunity for the team to serve the ball. Yeah, pretty simple. Right, and that means basically to start the game by hitting it to the other side. Now, one type of serve is the jump serve. Jump serve. Jump serve. Now, this is very popular, and you will see some players do this. They will throw the ball in the air and then jump in the air and hit it. That's right. All right, so that's a jump serve. And our last word for today is let serve. A let serve. Okay, we have a let serve today. So a let serve is uh, when you serve the ball mm -hmm. and it sort of brushes over the net. Right, it'll hit the net, but it will still pass to the other side. That's right, and that's an illegal move in volleyball, isn't it? When you are serving, yes. So a let serve. Right. So those are the six terms related to volleyball that we're going to be looking at today. And uh, well, with this in mind, let's move on to looking at some phrases now in, what is it? Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right. So our two announcers, Bob and Rick, said that we've got an exciting encounter ahead of us. Right. So they use this phrase, ahead of us. Ahead of us. So basically, what does that mean? Um, something will happen in the very near future. So they are expecting it or they will encounter it, maybe. Yes. So why don't we give a few examples of this phrase? Marco, we've got a long day ahead of us. We have a very exciting trip ahead of us today. Mm-hmm. Okay, so ahead of us. So we know it's an exciting game, and we heard the announcers say, without a doubt, both teams are in top shape. Okay, so the phrase without a doubt. Without a doubt. So if I start a phrase using without a doubt. You're basically saying it, there's no question. It's so obvious. This definitely is true. It's very true. Okay. Yep. So without a doubt, English Pod is the best podcast out there. Without a doubt, this is the strategy we should take. Okay, very good. So without a doubt. Why don't we move on to our third phrase now? This will prove to be a competitive match. So let's look at the phrase, will prove to be. Something will prove to be. Okay, so before we get into it, why don't we listen to some examples? Example one. 
and I think you will prove to be the greatest president we've ever had. Example 2 The new HR policy is proving to be a waste of time. Example 3 We were worried that we were going to get laid off, but our fears proved to be untrue. Okay, so when something will prove to be, it will show itself to be this thing, right? It will demonstrate. Mm -hmm. We will see it. We will see for sure how it will be. And now for our fourth phrase, a very simple one, but very common in sports commentators yep. or when you're watching a game. Mm -hmm. You'll say, great play. Great play. Great play. A great play. Now, we know play is usually a verb, right? Mm -hmm. But here it's acting as a noun. A play is basically a move in a sport or a game. So when somebody says a great play, it means all the succession of moves and passes and hits to make the point. Yep. So it was a great play. Mm -hmm. And that you can use that for any sport. Right. So why don't we listen to our dialogue now for the second time? And then we'll come back and talk about this very popular sport, volleyball. It's a beautiful day here in New Zealand at the Men's Volleyball World Championship. My name is Rick Fields and I'm joined by the man with the plan, Bob Copeland. Thank you, Rick. We've got a very exciting encounter ahead of us today as two powerhouse teams, Brazil and China, face off against each other and try to qualify for the next round. Without a doubt, both teams are in top shape, and this will prove to be a competitive match. The ref signals the start of the game, and here we go! Ribeiro serves, and China quickly receives the ball. Chun bumps it to the setter, and a very nice set by Chun. Xu spikes it. Wow, what a great hit. The Brazilian blockers anticipated the play and tried to block him, but he managed to get the ball in. Great play. It's China's service now. What a superb jump serve by Lee. Oh, oh, and we have a let serve. The ball was coming in fast and almost made it over the net. Brazil calls for a timeout and we'll be right back after a short commercial break. So are you a volleyball fan, Marco? It's a very nice sport. It's very fast and it's very hard. Yep. Um, but it's very interesting to get together with friends, maybe at the beach and play some beach volleyball or yes. something like that. Yeah, I think that's the best place to play volleyball. And, you know, uh, we even have beach volleyball up in uh, freezing cold Canada. And do you have sand? Um, occasionally. <laughs> All right. So volleyball is a great sport. But now we want to know what sport you want to learn about. We've covered soccer. We've covered basketball. We've covered volleyball. So tell us what other sports you would like to learn vocabulary and phrases on. That's right. You can tell us this and many more things at EnglishPod.com, our website. So check it out. Right. Leave your questions and comments and we'll see you guys there. Thanks for downloading and until next time, goodbye. Bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning then say the vocabulary word. Meet for a game or battle. Encounter. In the future. Ahead of someone. A highly energetic, strong team. Powerhouse. To reach the latter stages of a selection or process by competing successfully in earlier rounds. Qualify. In their best condition. In top shape. Hit the ball to start the game. Serve. To pass a volleyball by redirecting it with the forearms. Bump. The action of putting the ball in the air so it can be driven to the opponent's court. Set. Strongly hit the ball to the opponent's court using the palm of the hand. Spike. To foresee and act in advance of. 
anticipate. A serve with the ball firstly thrown overhead and then the player jumping to hit it. Jump serve. The ball touches the net in a serve but still crosses into the opponent's court. Let serve. A pause during the game. Time out. When the team that served the ball loses the rally, causing the other team to serve the next point. Side out. A mishit, when a player attempts to hit or spike the ball with an open hand and nearly misses the ball. Whiff. The ability to prevent the ball from touching one's court after a spike or attack, particularly a ball that is nearly touching the ground. Dig. It is the practice of throwing a coin in the air to resolve a dispute between two parties. Coin toss. A contest or game ending in a tie. Draw. Let's try that faster. A highly energetic, strong team. Powerhouse. To foresee and act in advance of. Anticipate. To reach the latter stages of a selection or process by competing successfully in earlier rounds. Qualify. In their best condition. In top shape. The ability to prevent the ball from touching one's court after a spike or attack, particularly a ball that is nearly touching the ground. Dig. It is the practice of throwing a coin in the air to resolve a dispute between two parties. Coin toss. To pass a volleyball by redirecting it with the forearms. Bump. In the future. Ahead of someone. A pause during the game. Time out. A serve with the ball firstly thrown overhead and then the player jumping to hit it. Jump serve. Hit the ball to start the game. Serve. When the team that served the ball loses the rally, causing the other team to serve the next point. Side out. A contest or game ending in a tie. Draw. A mishit, when a player attempts to hit or spike the ball with an open hand and nearly misses the ball. Whiff. Meet for a game or battle. Encounter. Strongly hit the ball to the opponent's court using the palm of the hand. Spike. The ball touches the net in a serve but still crosses into the opponent's court. Let serve. The action of putting the ball in the air so it can be driven to the opponent's court. Set. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Powerhouse. Our company is considered to be a powerhouse in the manufacturing industry. Powerhouse. How did Austria become a powerhouse of soccer in the 1920s? Powerhouse. China has grown into an economic powerhouse in the past decade. In top shape. Sarah ran a marathon this weekend and won. She is really in top shape. In top shape. You have to be in top shape to climb Mount Everest. In top shape.
Our company had great sales this quarter, so we are in top shape. Anticipate. We thought we could see all the animals in the zoo, but we didn't anticipate there would be so many people. Anticipate. I anticipated it would rain today, so I brought my umbrella. Anticipate. A businessman must try to anticipate what his customers will want. Set. The setter must set the ball precisely so the other player can hit it. Set. You are setting the ball too low. I can't hit it. Set. That was a great set. The player jumped and hit the ball perfectly. I was almost late to the sales meeting, but managed to make it on time. Sarah was sick, but she managed to make it to work today. I am sorry. I can't make it to your party tonight. I already have plans. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to another podcast here with us at English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're bringing you another part of our sports series. And this time it's an advanced lesson. That's right. We're heading to the mountains today to、um, take a skiing lesson. All right. So we're going to be learning about skiing, a winter sport and very popular throughout the world. So before we get started, why don't we take a look at a couple of words in vocabulary preview? Vocabulary preview. All right. So we're going to hear these two words in our dialogue. The first one is fresh powder. Fresh powder. Fresh powder. Okay, so powder, we probably know this phrase already. Yeah, but here we're talking about、uh, fresh, light snow. So, fresh, light snow, snow、mm-hmm. that recently fell. Yep. Okay, so it's, it looks like powder. The best, kind, the best kind for skiing on. Okay, the best kind. All right, so fresh powder. What about our next phrase? Well, we're also going to meet a four time giant slalom champion. All right, a four time giant slalom champion. Okay, so giant slalom is a type of ski race.、Mm-hmm. When you probably see it on TV when they go down the hill and they have to go through these red or blue flags, right? Yep. Now, four time giant slalom champion means he won the giant slalom four times. Okay, so this is an interesting way of saying that somebody did something many times. Right. So I can say the three time Nobel Prize winner. Yes, exactly. Okay. Or the five time Olympic gold medalist. Okay, perfect. So now it's time for us to go to the mountains with our famous Rick Fields and Bob Copeland, and we'll see what happens. Welcome, ski lovers of all ages. My name is Rick Fields, and here with me is the man that needs no introduction, Bob Copeland. Thank you, Rick. What a beautiful day here in Aspen, Colorado, where the sun is shining and we've got 12 inches of fresh powder. It doesn't get much better than this. That's right, Bob. But today we have a special treat for our viewers. We're joined here by Ian Rusi, four time giant slalom champion. And on this special edition of the show, Ian is going to teach us the basics of skiing. So let's hit the slopes. Well, first off, let's get those boots on. You're going to want to make sure your boots fit snugly. That's right. Now snap them into your bindings. And you're also going to want a good pair of goggles to protect your eyes. It's a bright day today, so there's going to be a lot of glare out there on the slopes. We don't want you hitting any of those moguls. Bob, since you're a beginner skier and might take a few spills, it's a good idea to have a good warm pair of dry ski gloves. <laughs> Easy there, Rick. Well, let's head over onto the chairlift and test your skills. All 
right, we're up here on the bunny hill, so Bob, why don't you do a few snowplow turns? Gnarly run, Rick. Nice carving. You've got some mad skills. That was sick. You want to see gnarly? Well, see that bump over there? I'm going to catch some major air. <laughs> <laughs> Butt plant. <laughs> he lost his skis. Yard sale. <clears throat> well, thanks for joining us here today. I think that about does it. Bob, Ian, time for some après ski? No way, man. We're off to grab some freshies. Pretty, uh, pretty embarrassing for Rick there, wasn't it? Yeah, he was a little bit uh, cocky, uh-huh. and then he ended up falling. Well, I think there's a lesson in that for all of us, but um, what the real lesson is today is language. So why don't we start with language takeaway? Language takeaway. All right, on language takeaway today, let's take a look at the first word. We have some bindings. 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 Bindings are sort of like a lock that attaches your boot to your ski. Mm -hmm. So those are the bindings. I guess it comes from the verb to bind. Yeah, to tie something um, so that it stays. Okay, binding. So, so for example, my bindings are broken. Okay, and another piece of skiing equipment and very important is goggles. Goggles. Okay, we have goggles now. Yep, not to be confused with Google. It's spelled almost the same way, huh? Yep, but goggles are... It's kind of like, imagine a big pair of glasses that you wear when you ski. Mm -hmm. So it makes people kind of look like flies. Yes. They yeah. have these huge glasses. Yeah. And you'll also see safety goggles, which you might wear if you are a mechanic fixing a car or someone working with wood or chemicals or what have you. Okay. So goggles basically protect your eyes from mm -hmm. snow, from the sun, from anything. That's right. All right. So moving on to our next ski word. They said uh, you should wear the goggles so that you don't accidentally go down, go over the moguls. Okay, moguls. Moguls. Okay, moguls. It sounds kind of strange. What, what are these things? Um, basically, these are uh, the bumps that are, are in a ski hill. Bumps. Okay, so mm -hmm. they're kind of like mini little hills. Yep. And they're very difficult to ski over, right? That's right. You got to be pretty good to uh, handle those moguls. Okay. Now, since these guys are beginner skiers, they're starting out on the bunny hill. A bunny hill. The bunny hill. Okay. Very popular among skiers. The bunny hill is the easiest hill. Mm -hmm. So it's where the beginners start to learn. Yeah. All the kids. All the kids are yeah. on the bunny hill. All right, and our final words. Actually, we're going to look at two words here because they mean almost exactly the same thing. We heard the ski instructor say gnarly. Gnarly run. Yeah, gnarly. So an interesting word, it's spelled G-N-A-R-L-E-Y. Okay, so, but you don't say gnarly. No. You just, say gnarly. Yep. And a related word, sick. Okay, now sick means to be sick, right? It no, 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 not here. Let's listen to some examples to help us understand. Example one. Those were some sick dance moves. You are amazing. Example two. Jack and I went to the beach yesterday and surfed some really gnarly waves. Example three. Man, the concert last night was sick. I can't believe we got front row seats. Okay, so basically gnarly and sick, they mean that it's amazing, it was cool. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So these two words are, are very, very informal. It's, it's yeah. slang. Yeah, and actually skier slang. Both of these words, I think, originated with skiers, snowboarders, skateboarders. Gnarly dudes. Gnarly dudes. Okay, so, okay, so that's all the words we have for language takeaway. But we have some great phrases that we want to take a look at before we listen to the dialogue again. So it's time now for Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right, so Rick said that it is time to... So Rick invited everyone to start skiing by saying, let's hit the slopes. Okay, so to hit the slopes. To hit the slopes. Okay, now we want to hit the slopes. What does that mean? Go skiing. Let's go skiing. Yep. Let's go to the mountain. Yep. Now we can change the noun slope mm -hmm. for something else, right? Yeah, you can, you can change it for a lot of other different nouns. Um, and why don't we hear some examples of how you can do that? Example one. I really have to hit the books and study for my exam tomorrow. Example two. I'm really tired. I think I'm going to hit the bed now. 
Example three. Honey, can we hit the supermarket on our way home? I need to buy some milk. Okay, great. So great examples, and now we understand how we can use the hit the something.、Mm -hmm. All right. What about our next phrase? Well, Rick warned Bob、uh, that he might take a few spills. Okay, so to take a spill. To take a spill. Take a spill. Fall. To fall. Yep. It, it means like a like a light fall or or. Yeah, pretty dramatic fall. Pretty dramatic. So、yeah. you fell. Yeah. So, for example, instead of saying that little girl was riding her bike and she fell,、mm -hmm. I can say that little girl was riding her bike and she took a bad spill. Yep. Okay. So to take a spill, you have to use the verb take, though. Yes, exactly. You cannot just spill. Okay. You have to take a spill.、Mm -hmm. All right. What about our next phrase? Well,、um, you might take a spill when you catch some major air. Okay. Catch some major air. To catch some major air. So. Am I catching something? How, how am I catching air? That's impossible. Well, imagine if you're jumping and your skis are catching the air. Ah, okay. So I'm in the air for a very long time, maybe. Yeah. When you catch some air, basically it's it's like you're flying for a couple seconds. So you're flying for a couple of seconds. You're very high up in the air. Yep. Okay. To catch some air. Yeah, and you'll hear this phrase、um, when you're, you know, not only when you're talking about skiing, but also maybe if you're, you know, you're driving your car really fast and it sort of jumps up in the air for a minute. Well, not a minute, <laughs> a second. That would be catching air as well. Okay, so to catch air.、Mm -hmm. All right, so they finished skiing. They were kind of tired, and he said, "Well, let's call it a day." To call it a day. Let's call it a day. Let's go home. Let's go home. It's over. Yes.、Yeah, let's finish. Let's finish the day. Yep. Let's call it a day and go home.、Mm -hmm. But not before we go to our next word、uh, to grab some freshies. All right, grab us some freshies. Grab some freshies. Okay, freshies. What are these freshies? Remember we talked about fresh powder.、Mm -hmm. It's that. So it's an informal way of saying fresh powder. Yeah, fresh powdery light snow. Okay, freshies. Yep. So the snow that nobody has skied on before. Really good phrases and some amazing vocabulary. Let's listen to this dialogue one last time, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this really fun sport. Welcome, ski lovers of all ages. My name is Rick Fields, and here with me is the man that needs no introduction, Bob Copeland. Thank you, Rick. What a beautiful day here in Aspen, Colorado, where the sun is shining and we've got 12 inches of fresh powder. It doesn't get much better than this. That's right, Bob. But today we have a special treat for our viewers. We're joined here by Ian Rusi, four-time giant slalom champion. And on this special edition of the show, Ian is going to teach us the basics of skiing. So let's hit the slopes. Well, first off, let's get those boots on. You're going to want to make sure your boots fit snugly. That's right. Now snap them into your bindings, and you're also going to want a good pair of goggles to protect your eyes. It's a bright day today, so there's going to be a lot of glare out there on the slopes. We don't want you hitting any of those moguls. Bob, since you're a beginner skier and might take a few spills, it's a good idea to have a good warm pair of dry ski gloves. <laughs> Easy there, Rick. Well, let's head over onto the chairlift and test your skills. All right, we're up here on the bunny hill. So, Bob, why don't you do a few snowplow turns? Gnarly run, Rick. Nice carving. You've got some mad skills. That was sick. You want to see gnarly? Well, see that bump over there? I'm gonna catch some major air. <laughs> <laughs> Butt plant. <laughs> He lost his skis. Yard sale. <clears throat> well, thanks for joining us here today. I think that about does it. Bob, Ian. Time for some après ski? No way, man. We're off to grab some freshies. Well, we heard the guys、uh, talk about après ski, and actually, this is one of my favorite parts of skiing.、Mm -hmm. what, what is this? It sounds French. Yeah, it is. I guess the Frenchness sort of gives it an <laughs> air of of specialness, right?、Uh -huh. But après ski is basically the party that you have after your your finished skiing. So usually, you would have parties after skiing, right? So you you finish you you finish your ski day. You've called it a day. You've.、Uh, Glided down those slopes, and you, you head on over to the lodge. You know, the,、mm -hmm. the little cabin.、Mm -hmm. Grab a, a beer or two, or maybe some hot alcoholic drink, and、mm -hmm. uh, kick back and relax with your friends. Wow! So it's popular for 
families to go to a ski resort and stay there for a couple of days. So yep. this is when you would do this with your friends or family. Yep. And you know what? If, if it's with your friends, it's going to last until late into the night. <laughs> All right. So it sounds fun. And next time, maybe if you go skiing with your friends and you guys are speaking English now, you can use all these great phrases and maybe surprise your friends if you tell them, let's go grab some freshies or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you'll sound pretty, pretty dialed. Pretty cool. <laughs> all right. So that's all we, the time we have for today. Be sure to check out our website, EnglishPod.com. Marco and I are always around to answer your questions. And, well, thanks for downloading. Until next time, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> the English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. A skiing race where you must go through flags. Slalom. The building that has restaurants and stores on the ski hill. Lodge. Winner. Champion. Powder. Soft, light snow. Pow. Start skiing. Hit the slopes. Avalanche. Lots of snow falling off the mountain. Avi. A person who operates the chairlift. Lifty. Fitting very tightly. Snugly. A steep hill with high sides shaped like a bowl. Bowl. Make something attach by pressing down. Snap. A bottom part that attaches the boot to a ski. Binding. A pair of glasses used to protect one's eyes. Goggles. Bright light that is reflected by the snow. Glare. A space on the mountain which is used for skiing. Slopes. A bump on a ski hill. Mogul. A covering of the hands with each finger separated so as to keep it warm. Ski glove. A slow, easy turn where you make a V with the skis. Snowplow turn. Turn on your skis with your edges. Carving. A line of chairs with a moving cable that carries people up the mountain. Chairlift. A party or drinks after skiing. Après ski. Ski on the area that has never been skied before. Grab some freshies. Falling so hard that you lose all your ski equipment. Yard sale. Used to describe a skier that jumps really, really high. Catch some major air. Small hill. Bump. Awesome. Cool. Used by ski lovers. Gnarly. Fall. Take a spill. Let's try that faster. Avalanche. Lots of snow falling off the mountain. Avi. Fall. Take a spill. A steep hill with high sides shaped like a bowl. Bowl. A bottom part that attaches the boot to a ski. Binding. A slow, easy turn where you make a V with the skis. Snowplow turn. 
A pair of glasses used to protect one's eyes. Goggles. A covering of the hands with each finger separated so as to keep it warm. Ski glove. Falling so hard that you lose all your ski equipment. Yard sale. A party or drinks after skiing. Après ski. The building that has restaurants and stores on the ski hill. Lodge. A person who operates the chairlift. Lifty. Small hill. Bump. Bright light that is reflected by the snow. Glare. Winner. Champion. Awesome. Cool. Used by ski lovers. Gnarly. A line of chairs with a moving cable that carries people up the mountain. Chairlift. A space on the mountain which is used for skiing. Slopes. A skiing race where you must go through flags. Slalom. Used to describe a skier that jumps really, really high. Catch some major air. Make something attach by pressing down. Snap. Powder. Soft, light snow. Pow. Fitting very tightly. Snugly. A bump on a ski hill. Mogul. Start skiing. Hit the slopes. Ski on the area that has never been skied before. Grab some freshies. Turn on your skis with your edges. Carving. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Hit the slopes. It's a perfect day for skiing, so I want to make sure that we hit the slopes before 9 a.m. Hit the slopes. You have a test in two days and you haven't studied? You'd better hit the books. Hit the slopes. Wow, I have to be at my job interview in 15 minutes. I need to leave and hit the road. Catch some major air. Tom and I went to the skate park last weekend and I took some great pictures of him catching some air. Catch some major air. The car hit the sidewalk and caught some air before it flipped and hit the street. Catch some major air. I'm always afraid of going too fast on the jumps and catching some air. Gnarly. Those were some gnarly dance moves. You are amazing. Gnarly. Jack and I went to the beach yesterday and surfed some really gnarly waves. Gnarly. Man, that concert last night was gnarly. I can't believe we got front row seats. Take a spill. I was teaching my niece how to ride her bike and she accidentally took a spill. My uncle was so angry. Take a spill.
Did you see that? The girl tripped on the sidewalk and took a nasty spill. Take a spill. Craig took a spill on his motorcycle and broke his arm. Well, I think that about does it. We've finished up all the work today and we're ready to go home. That about does it for today's class, everyone. Thanks for coming. That about does it for today's meeting. See you all here next week. Hello everyone, welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. Hi guys, my name is Catherine. And today we're going to be looking at another lesson uh, as part of our sports series. And this time, well, it's a debate. Is it a game or is it a sport? Oh, it's a sport. You have to work your mind. Yeah, so we're looking at chess, a very old, very popular sport, very difficult to play as well. It takes a lot of practice. And believe me, it's frustrating at the beginning. And I'm still kind of in the beginning, intermediate stages. But uh, yeah, it takes a lot of practice and it takes a, well, it takes a lot of time to familiarize yourself with the rules. Right. So we're going to be learning a little bit more about the pieces and the rules today. Okay, perfect. So we're not going to preview anything. Let's listen to the dialogue for the first time. And then we'll come back and talk about the sport. Bobby, come here. Look what I got you. What is that? A chessboard. Daddy is going to teach you how to play. Cool. Okay. Each player gets 16 pieces. You can be the white ones, and I'll play with the black pieces. Now in the front, you set up the pawns. Those are the least valuable pieces, and can only move one space forward. When you're about to capture another piece, it can move one space diagonally. What about all these other pieces? See this one that looks like a tower? It's called the Rook. The one with the tall hat is called the Bishop. See this little horsey? This is called the Knight. It's a very important piece, so it's best not to let your opponent capture it. And these two? They are husband and wife. That's right. That's the Queen, and that's the King. If the other player captures your King, he will say, checkmate, and the game is over. Doesn't this sound fun? Nah, this sounds boring. I'm gonna go play killer zombies on my PlayStation. All right, so um, the kid is obviously not very interested in learning how to play chess. Not at all. You know, the art of these kind of slower games might be replaced very soon by video games. Yeah, I guess uh, it doesn't really appeal to a little nine-year-old or ten-year-old instead of, you know, playing something like this versus, yeah, shooting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's a very great game. It's very difficult, like we mentioned. So we're going to look at the name of the pieces and the rules that are related to these pieces in Language Takeaway. Language takeaway. Well, the first one you might have heard before because this is a word that is often used in strategy in general. So mm -hmm. um, the word pawn. A pawn. A pawn usually means uh, something that is not very important that you can use to distract an opponent. Mm -hmm. All right. So on the chessboard, you have eight pawns. So these are the ones that you have the most, but their movement is very limited. So That's they right. can only move two spaces forward on the first move, right? Right. Or one space after that. One space forward. And only when it's going to capture another piece can it move diagonally. All right, so you can't just go diagonally. You have to go forward until you're going to take another person's piece to capture it and to go diagonally. All right. But a pawns is funny. You can also use this word when you're talking about other things, like he used her as a pawn in his little game. No. You know? So you want to make an analogy. You want to make a comparison from life to these games. You can, you can use the word pawn. Pawn. Very good. Now, moving on to the other pieces on the chess board. On the very far ends of the board, you have the rook. Okay, you got two of these, and right. they kind of look like t 
towers from a castle. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a very, well, they're very important pieces very and actually important. my favorite pieces because they're not very important at the beginning of a game, but at the end of a game, boom, 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 you can do a lot <laughs> of damage because they can go anywhere in straight lines. Right, so they can go forward, backwards, and to the sides mm-hmm. as many spaces as they want. The whole board if the they want. The whole board. Yeah, so easy easy pieces to forget about at the beginning, but they're very important. And now uh, next to the rook, we have the bishop. Okay, this is very different from the rook because the bishop can also go anywhere, but they can only go diagonally. Right, so only diagonally. They can also move four directions, but diagonally, right? Exactly, so you can go forward and backward, but it has to be in the, at a diagonal slanted line. Okay, and now next to the bishop, we have the knight. Ooh, the knight. So he's the one galloping on the horse like those old stories of King Arthur we used to hear. But uh, the <laughs> knight can go in an L shape, and I, I've exactly. never understood this. But It's weird. So it can move two spaces forward and then one to the right or one to the left. Mm-hmm. Or it can move two spaces to the right and then one forward. So it's very strange, but it always has to move three spaces and in the shape of an L. So I thought maybe he was the drunken piece. <laughs> he can go forward a little bit, then thump, thump. He kind <laughs> he of moves to the side. To the side. <laughs> right, so that's the knight. It's actually a very, very important piece as well. And uh, now the two main pieces maybe of the chessboard, the, the queen and king. So the king is kind of sad. He can only move one space, but the queen is really the killer because she can do anything she wants. This is uh, interesting, right? Why do they make it like that? The queen can move as many spaces as as she wants in any direction, Mm -hmm. while the king can do the same any direction he wants, but only one space. Mm, I don't know. I think there's uh, some similarity between real life now. It's like the queen can do anything she wants, and the king can kind of do whatever he wants. Well, maybe it has to do with he has the, the fact that he has to stay put and represent the country, and she can move around and mm. move behind the scenes and has a little bit more mobility. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? So, uh, but in the end, the most important piece is the king, right? Once the king is captured, the game is over. Exactly. So uh, let's listen to today's dialogue one more time and slow it down a bit and find out if the boy understood any of these rules. Bobby, come here. Look what I got you. What is that? A chessboard. Daddy's gonna teach you how to play. Cool. Okay. Each player gets 16 pieces. You can be the white ones, and I'll play with the black pieces. Now in the front, you set up the pawns. Those are the least valuable pieces, and can only move one space forward. When you're about to capture another piece... It can move one space diagonally. What about all these other pieces? See this one that looks like a tower? It's called the Rook. The one with the tall hat is called the Bishop. See this little horsey? This is called the Knight. It's a very important piece, so it's best not to let your opponent capture it. And these two? They are husband and wife. That's right. That's the queen, and that's the king. If the other player captures your king, he will say, Checkmate, and the game is over. Doesn't this sound fun? Nah, this sounds boring. I'm gonna go play Killer Zombies on my PlayStation. All right, we're back, and uh, now why don't we explain a couple of these phrases that we also use to explain the pieces, but let's look at at some of these more in depth now in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. So, Marco, one of the first phrases that we uh, that we heard was the word uh, t- was the phrase to move diagonally mm-hmm. or a diagonal line. And so, the pawns can sometimes do this, and the bishop can do this. Mm-hmm. But what does it mean to move diagonally? Okay, so basically, a diagonal line is not a line that goes straight up, right, straight mm-hmm. up to the sky, for example, or to the side. Mm-hmm. Right, it goes uh, at an angle, so it's maybe going at forty-five degrees or thirty degrees. So that's a that's a diagonal movement or a diagonal exactly. line. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The next phrase we have is very strange, and this one you might hear from parents or children. Mm-hmm. He says, "A little horsey." Little horsey. So, <laughs> uh, in many languages, we have ways of uh, breaking down words or adding to words to make them sound cuter. Mm-hmm. And this is one of those cases. So, uh, for example, little puppy or little ki- kitty or kitten. These mm-hmm. are words to make to make things sound cuter. So, uh, in this case, horse becomes 
Horsey. Horsey. So I want to ride the horsey. It's a cute way of saying I want to ride the cute horse. Mommy, mommy, I want to ride the horsey. <laughs> exactly. So baby talk often involves having these rhyming words. Mommy, horsey, doggy, puppy. Mm -hmm. A doggy, exactly. Very good. So it's a, it's a cute way of saying something. And uh, now when we were talking about the, the chess pieces, uh, when another piece takes or gets a piece, you say it captures it. Okay, we say capture because, well, maybe it's a bit nicer than killing it, but yeah. capture means taking and keeping for yourself. Mm -hmm. So we have a very popular game in America called Capture the Flag. Right, where you have to take each other's flag, right? You're stealing, You're stealing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the term that is used in chess to capture another piece. Sometimes, like, for example, in Spanish, uh, we actually say, like, to eat the other piece. Really? Yeah, you, you eat it. That's weird. weird. <laughs> well, we're a little bit more tame yeah. in those English-speaking countries, but... Uh, To capture is uh, is a very important phrase, and you're going to hear that in the news as well, because you can capture a person. You can capture a criminal. Mm -hmm. All right. And the final word and the way that you end a game of chess, you say checkmate. 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 <laughs> so the game's over. Checkmate. Well, there's two things that can happen at the end of a game, and, uh, well, only one thing can happen at the very end of a game, but you're going to hear these two phrases. One is check, and the other is checkmate. Mm -hmm. So check means that I can take your king if I want to. Move. <laughs> right. It's in danger. It's in danger. But checkmate is the end all. This means this is the very, very last part of a game where you cannot do anything. I've trapped you, and I win. Right. Very good. So the game is over when somebody says checkmate. Uh, why don't we listen to this dialogue for the last time and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this very interesting game. Bobby, come here. Look what I got you. What is that? A chessboard. Daddy's going to teach you how to play. Cool. Okay. Each player gets 16 pieces. You can be the white ones and I'll play with the black pieces. Now in the front. You set up the pawns. Those are the least valuable pieces and can only move one space forward. When you're about to capture another piece, it can move one space diagonally. What about all these other pieces? See this one that looks like a tower? It's called the Rook. The one with the tall hat is called the Bishop. See this little horsey? This is called the Knight. It's a very important piece so it's best not to let your opponent capture it. And these two? They are husband and wife. That's right. That's the queen, and that's the king. If the other player captures your king, he will say, checkmate, and the game is over. Doesn't this sound fun? Nah, this sounds boring. I'm gonna go play killer zombies on my PlayStation. Pop quiz, Marco. All right. The word check... And the word mate. They both have they both have meanings in English, but put together, what is what is this where does this phrase come from? What could it possibly mean? I have no idea. Why don't you tell us? Because I seriously don't know where it where it comes from. Okay, well this is actually very interesting because I, I looked it up and I I had no idea either mm -hmm. because we've always just said this. Right. And uh, it doesn't really make sense. So I looked it up on the internet. And I discovered that the game of chess is actually a very ancient game. Mm-hmm. And it did not come from England. It did not come from France. It actually came from Persia. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Persian, there are some words that kind of became the English words checkmate that mean the king is captured or the king is defeated. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So that's what it means. It doesn't exactly. mean the king is dead. No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that he's dead. It means that he's been taken. Okay. And so over time... The uh, Persian word went into Arabic, and Arabic became French and English, and then now we say checkmate. Checkmate. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Um, this is a very interesting word, and I'm sure everybody that's listening has a different uh, translation for it in their own language. I know, for example, that in Spanish, we would say jaque mate. Jaque mate. Right. So uh, I guess like jaque is something's in check, it's in danger, and then mate, kind of like kill. So maybe it's it's probably not translated properly because, as, as you mentioned, it, it should mean defeated or, or captured, not killed. So, uh, listeners, why don't you let us know how you say checkmate in your language? Come to our website, EnglishPod.com. And also tell us if you have questions about the things we talked about today or if you want to share some stories of your own chess victories. Uh, please get in touch with us on our website. Uh, otherwise, you can email us at EnglishPod at PraxisLanguage.com. But until then, have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.
the English Pod audio review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. On a diagonal, forward and to the left or right. Diagonally. A game in which each player moves 16 pieces across a board and tries to capture the opponent's king. Chess. The final and most important piece in chess. King. Make ready for use. Set up. A very powerful piece in chess. Queen. Very useful or helpful. Valuable. A useful piece in chess. Knight. To take. Capture. A piece in chess that can only move diagonally. Bishop. The weakest piece in chess, a person or group without much power. Pawn. Not interesting. Boring. A piece in chess that can only move along straight lines. Rook. Describe situation in which king cannot move. Checkmate. Let's try that faster. Not interesting. Boring. A useful piece in chess. Knight. The final and most important piece in chess. King. Describe situation in which king cannot move. Checkmate. A game in which each player moves 16 pieces across a board and tries to capture the opponent's king. Chess. A very powerful piece in chess. Queen. To take. Capture. Make ready for use. Set up. The weakest piece in chess, a person or group without much power. Pawn. A piece in chess that can only move diagonally. Bishop. On a diagonal, forward and to the left or right. Diagonally. Very useful or helpful. Valuable. A piece in chess that can only move along straight lines. Rook. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Diagonally. Susan lives diagonally across the street from us. Diagonally. The bishop is a piece that can move diagonally as many spaces as it wants. Diagonally. Diane sits diagonally from me at work. Set up. Help me set up my new home theater system. Set up. We can't work today because the workers are setting up the network. Set up. We are setting everything up for the party tonight. It's gonna be fun!
valuable. His house was furnished with valuable antique furniture. Valuable. The witness provided valuable information, which led to the apprehension of the murderer. Valuable. All my valuables were stolen from my home last night. Capture. Oh no! You captured my queen. Capture. I have captured almost all your pieces. You will lose. Capture. I can't believe the police finally captured that murderer. Pawn. Germania was an underdeveloped nation that was a pawn in international politics. Pawn. The pawn is the least valuable piece on the chessboard, but it is a very important piece. Pawn. He used Sherry as a pawn in his evil game. Hello, everyone, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. My name is Catherine, and today we're going to be talking about a very fun game. That's right. Today we're going bowling, a very popular sport amongst many people, and so we're going to take a look at how you play this sport and all the vocab related to this great game. All right. So let's take a listen to our dialogue, and we'll be right back. All right. So the first thing you need to know about bowling is that you should never cross that line where the lane begins. Why not? Because they polish and oil it to make the ball slide down. If you step there, you'll slip and fall. Okay. So I got my bowling shoes, my ball, our names on the scorecard. So now, how the heck do I play this? You throw the ball down the lane and try to knock down all the pins. If you do, that is called a strike. If you don't knock them all down on the first try, then you get a chance to get the spare. After ten frames, we add up the points and see who has the most. Three hundred is a perfect score, but very hard to get. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna give it a go. Oh no, my ball went in the gutter. I told you, it's harder than you think. Now let a pro show you how it's done. All right, we're back. So now let's take a look at some of that vocab on language takeaway. Language takeaway. So the first word we have today in language takeaway is lane. That's right,、uh, a bowling lane. So a lane that is where you actually play this 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 game. That's right. A lane is also a word for like a road, a small narrow road.、Mm-hmm. So in bowling, this is the flat surface, the floor that's long that you roll the ball down. That's right. Okay, so that's your lane. So as you said, you roll the ball down the lane and you try to knock down the pins that are at the end of the lane. That's right. So pins are—they're a little bit heavy.、Mm-hmm. They're usually white and they have—they're—they're、uh, they're wide at the bottom and narrow at the top.、Mm-hmm. They almost look like wine bottles. Exactly. And the goal of the game is to knock these down to make them fall on the ground. That's right. Okay, so that's why you are using. That's why you are throwing the ball down the lane to knock down these pins.、Mm-hmm. Now, if you knock all of them down on your first try, that's called a strike. 
A strike. That's right. So that means all 10 pins fall down on your first try. But sometimes you don't get a strike. You maybe knock down eight pins. Mm -hmm. And then later on your second try, because every person gets two tries, Mm -hmm. on your second try, you you knock down the last two pins. Now, what's that called, Marco? So if you knock uh, all of them down on your second try, that's called a spare. Okay, strike. Usually you write it with an X. That's a that's on the scorecard and a spare, which is two two tries to get all ten pins. That's a slash. That's right. A spare. And if you don't get all of the pins in two tries, you still get points. Right. So if you knock down eight pins, you get eight. That's right. Or if right. you knock down four pins, you get four. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you put your score on uh, on your scorecard. And now each player usually gets ten frames or ten different opportunities to knock down all the pins. All right, so usually these are boxes on the scorecard, mm-hmm. and uh, you can pay, play 10-frame bowling or also 5-frame, mm-hmm. uh, but it's important to remember that each frame gives you the opportunity to, to bowl two times. Right. All right, so you, you get those two tries. So really, it's 20 total tries right. to knock down these pins. That's right. And now, if you did really well, and on every opportunity of each frame, you got a strike... That means that you would get a perfect score. That's right, a perfect score. That means that you made no mistakes. You knocked down all the pins on the first try. And uh, now, obviously, down the lane, it's not as easy as it looks because uh, to the sides of your bowling lane, you have this kind of a path. Uh, that's to the bottom. So if your ball goes in there, you can't get it out. That's right. So remember, like I said earlier, a lane is also the name of a a place where we can walk or drive. It's Mm -hmm. like a road. Mm -hmm. Well, we have gutters, which are on the sides of these roads, and also in bowling, gutters. Mm -hmm. They're lower, and normally on the streets, they're for water. Mm -hmm. But in bowling, they're, they're the places on the right or the left side where your ball will fall. And That's if right. your ball falls into the gutter or it rolls into the gutter, you will hit no pins. Right. That's. I think that's the main thing. If, if your ball goes in the gutter, you don't hit any pins at all. It just goes straight down and you don't hit anything. That's right. So it's really sad when you, when you, you bowl badly and you get a gutter ball, we call it. That's right. All right. So let's take a look at all this vocab again. Let's listen to our dialogue. And we'll be back in a bit with Fluency Builder. All right, so the first thing you need to know about bowling is that you should never cross that line where the lane begins. Why not? Because they polish and oil it to make the ball slide down. If you step there, you'll slip and fall. Okay, so I got my bowling shoes, my ball, our names on the scorecard, so now how the heck do I play this? You throw the ball down the lane and try to knock down all the pins. If you do, that is called a strike. If you don't knock them all down on the first try, then you get a chance to get the spare. After 10 frames, we add up the points and see who has the most. 300 is a perfect score, but very hard to get. Got it. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. Oh, no, my ball went in the gutter. I told you, it's harder than you think. Now let a pro show you how it's done. All right, so we've picked out three different phrases for you. Let's take a look at those now in Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right, so the first phrase that we have today is something that you're going to hear a lot, although I want to remind everyone this is very informal. So we heard someone say in the dialogue, so now how the heck do I play this? Okay, so how the heck do I turn this computer on? Okay, so how do I turn this computer on means I don't know, please help me. Mm -hmm. But how the heck means I really don't know, Mm -hmm. I really need your help. That's right, I really don't understand what's going on, I need someone's help. Like how the heck did this happen means I absolutely did not expect this to happen, I'm very surprised. That's right, it's actually a not very polite phrase to use, but at the same time it's not terribly impolite. It's in the middle. Uh But it's very informal. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so now uh, the person understands how to bowl, how the game works, and he says, okay, got it. I'm going, I'm going to give it a go. Okay, I'm gonna means I'm going to, and this mm-hmm. is very informal. Mm-hmm. Gonna is a way to say going to, I will. Mm-hmm. But the phrase here is give it a go. What does that mean, Marco? Give it a go. So if you're going to give it a go, it means that you're going to try. 
Okay, so I'm gonna try. Mm-hmm. So we could say this: um, Now that we know how to play the game, let's give it a go. Mm-hmm. Let's try to play because we've been talking about it, but we haven't been doing it. That's right. So to give it a go means to try to do something. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and that's basically it. If maybe you're watching a game on the street and you want to try maybe a card game, you say, "Okay, I, I want to give it a go." I want to give it a go. Mm-hmm. All right. And what about our last phrase? Now the very last phrase is the last phrase of our dialogue. The character says, "Now let a pro show you how it's done." All right. So how it's done? This、um, let me show you how it's done because this person is saying, "I'm a pro." Let me show you how it's done.、Uh, it's a very interesting way of saying saying something in English. What what is the real meaning of this phrase? He's basically saying, "Now let me show you how to do it." Okay, the correct way. Right. So basically, he's. Saying you didn't do it very well,、mm-hmm. you didn't bowl very well. You're new.、Mm-hmm. Let me show you how professional people bowl. Right. Let me、exactly. give you an example. Exactly.、Mm-hmm. Maybe、uh, you and your friend are making a cake, and you don't really know what you're doing. So your friend says, "Move over. Let me show you how it's done." That means the proper way to do it, the correct way.、Mm-hmm. So, Marco, you're not doing it right. Let me show you how it's done. Exactly, a very useful phrase, and actually, it can seem a little bit confusing because you're using the the verb there, done.、Uh, so it may seem a little bit weird, do done. But don't worry about it. Just take it as a phrase. Let me show you how to do it. Let me show you how it's done. That's right. So that's all we've got for Fluency Builder today. Let's take another listen to our dialogue, and we'll be back in a second. All right. So the first thing you need to know about bowling is that you should never cross that line where the lane begins. Why not? Because they polish and oil it to make the ball slide down. If you step there, you'll slip and fall. Okay. So I got my bowling shoes, my ball, our names on the scorecard. So now, how the heck do I play this? You throw the ball down the lane and try to knock down all the pins. If you do, that is called a strike. If you don't knock them all down on the first try, then you get a chance to get the spare. After ten frames, we add up the points and see who has the most. Three hundred is a perfect score, but very hard to get. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna give it a go. Oh no, my ball went in the gutter. I told you, it's harder than you think. Now let a pro show you how it's done. All right, we're back. So bowling is actually a very、uh, kind of like a pastime in the United States. You get together with friends and you just go bowling. That's right. I do believe it's also considered a sport. So many、mm-hmm. people play professionally or semi-professionally.、Mm-hmm. But for me, it's always been a very social game. Something you do with a group of friends.、Uh, you go out. It's, it's really fun. Yeah, it's、uh, especially because、uh, when you go bowling, many people can play, right?、Uh, not obviously at the same time, but you take turns, and so while you're waiting, people are talking and, and eating. So it's it is a very social activity. That's right. So maybe a group of people will rent a lane. Remember, we were talking earlier about a lane being that one. Kind of strip of wood where you、mm-hmm. roll the bowl the ball.、Mm-hmm. Uh, well, a group of friends can rent a lane or two lanes,、mm-hmm. and the four or the eight of you can play together. Each person playing, you know, one frame at a time. That's right. And now, actually, it, it, the other thing about it is, it's very funny to see. People trying to bowl, or maybe with the heavy ball, or maybe they they pass the line that we said they shouldn't pass, and they slip and fall. So I guess that's what also makes it a little bit fun to play. Yes, it can be a little <laughs> bit、uh, embarrassing if you're not. I'm I'm not very good, so I'm a very embarrassing bowler. But it's also really fun because、uh, if you go and you just you know have a nice time, and、mm-hmm. it's it's a very social game. Well, it, it is, and and actually, we are really curious to know if you've ever been bowling. I know many people who've never been bowling, and they find it very, very fun. So why don't you come to our website, EnglishPod dot com, and leave your questions and comments there as well? Yeah, we hope to see you there. Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the EnglishPod audio review. Listen to the meaning. Then say the vocabulary word. A game where you try to knock pins down with a ball. Bowling. To make smooth and glossy, especially by rubbing or friction. Polish. 
any narrow or well-defined passage, track, channel, or course. Lane To strike in collision Knock A sunken channel on each side of the lane Gutter An expert player Pro Let's try that faster. To strike in collision Knock To make smooth and glossy, especially by rubbing or friction. Polish An expert player. Pro A sunken channel on each side of the lane. Gutter A game where you try to knock pins down with a bowl. Bowling any narrow or well-defined passage, track, channel, or course. Lane Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Pro Did you see him play in that match? He is so pro. Pro I think that guy playing is a pro. Pro. You can't beat me. I'm too much of a pro. Polish. I need to polish my shoes. They are so dull. Polish. The floor is so rough, it needs to be polished. Polish After the polishing, the ice rink was super smooth. Bowling I'm so bored, let's go bowling. Bowling I hate bowling. I always fall over. Bowling I always practice my bowling. I want to have a perfect game. Gutter The gutter is full of rubbish. Someone should clean it up. Gutter. I like bowling, but my ball always goes into the gutter. Gutter. Watch out, I saw a rat in the gutter. Knock. If I knock these pins over, I will have a perfect score. Knock. I knocked into my friend while we were go-karting, which caused him to crash. Knock. Hey, be careful, you nearly knocked over my vase. Hello everyone and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. My name is Catherine and we're going to the gym today, right Marco? That's right. Today we're going to go to the gym and uh, we're going to try to lose weight or to get in shape. So, before we start out though, there is a phrasal verb that we should take a look at. So today in vocabulary preview, we're looking at this phrase to work out or working out. That's right. So when we go to the gym, this is what we do. We go there to work out. To exercise or to tone up. Um, this is just a way of saying that I'm going to go somewhere like a gym to exercise myself. That's right. So um, with that in mind, we're going to go to the gym, we're going to work out, and we're going to learn a lot of words today about what exactly goes on in the gym.
Do you want to go catch a movie tonight? I can't. I have to go to the gym. Come on. You can go tomorrow. Just skip it today. It's not as if you're going to get in trouble. Actually, I will. I'm working out with a personal trainer that gets on my case if I don't go. I like it because it makes me feel more obligated to go and get healthy. That's cool. Does your personal trainer basically teach you how to work out? Yeah. He makes a workout plan depending on the areas I want to work on or the muscles I want to build. Like, for example, in order to get better muscle tone in my abs, pecs, and biceps, he makes me work out with free weights. Then for my quads, calves, and hamstrings, I do leg lifts or squats. Sounds like you're really getting into shape. All right, so now we're back. Let's take a look at language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, first of all, in today's dialogue, we heard a lot about this person called a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. What does a personal trainer do, Marco? So basically, you have a person that is your coach, the person that guides you and teaches you how to work out or what you should do. All right, so personal means it's just for me. This person is only helping me. Mm -hmm. And a trainer is someone who, like you say, gives me guidance. Mm -hmm. um, so personal trainer is someone who will work with me every day or maybe one time a week to really get the most out of my workout. That's right. So that is a personal trainer. And uh, as we said, he's going to help us to build muscle. We want to build muscle when we go to the gym. All right, so this is an interesting one because the verb is not to grow or to make. The verb is to build. Mm -hmm. So um, I have muscles, but I want my muscles to get bigger, so I go to build muscles at the gym. That's um, right. You might even hear this phrase, a bodybuilder. So mm -hmm. this idea that you make them. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So you, you don't get muscle, you don't create muscle, you build muscle. And alongside with muscles, not only do you get them big, but you also get muscle tone. All right, so muscle tone basically means definition. So maybe before you start to work out, you, your body is very soft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You can't see the muscles. Mm -hmm. Well, when you start to see those muscles, you see the lines and your body, your skin gets tighter, mm -hmm. not so soft. That's called muscle tone. That's right. So then you can see the muscles. That's muscle tone. And now the muscles that we most commonly go to the gym to work out, we're going to name really quickly and we're going to see where they are. So the first one that we mentioned were abs. Okay, this is an important one, especially if you want to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. The abs are located on your stomach. Mm -hmm. So you see those kind of rectangles, those squares on your stomach. Um, those are the abs. That's right. And now for guys also, we want to work out our pecs or our pectoral muscles. So those are on your chest, mm -hmm. um, below your neck, but above your stomach. That's right. And another important one on your arm, we have our biceps. All right, men usually like to show these off, or at least boys do. <laughs> um, these are on your arms, so you know when you make that L shape with your arm and you squeeze like Popeye? Mm -hmm. Those are your, your biceps. Those are your biceps, exactly. And now, uh, obviously, going down towards our legs now, we have our quad muscles, our quads. All right, so those are on the top part of your legs, right, Marco? Mm -hmm, in front. In front, so like on the top of your thigh. Exactly. And now right behind the back part of your uh, leg, uh, you have your hamstrings. Hamstring. Now, you hear about this one a lot because people injure their hamstrings pretty easily in football or in running. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes if you're running and you didn't stretch, your muscles are not warm, you can pull a hamstring. All right, so that hamstring is an important one. But we have one more. That's right. We have our calves, and these are in the bottom right above our feet. So I don't have any muscles except for this one <laughs> because <laughs> I ride my bike, and when you ride your bike, this gets big. So your calves are that part of your leg above your foot but below your knee in the back. That's right, the back part. Very good. So all of these muscles, some of the most common ones that we work out. So now let's move on to some important phrases on Fluency Builder. Do you want to go catch a movie tonight? I can't. I have to go to the gym. Come on. You can go tomorrow. Just skip it today. It's not as if you're going to get in trouble. Actually, I will. I'm working out with a personal trainer that gets on my case if I don't go. I like it because it makes me feel more obligated to go and get healthy. That's cool. Does your personal trainer basically teach you how to work out? Yeah. 
He makes a workout plan depending on the areas I want to work on or the muscles I want to build. Like, for example, in order to get better muscle tone in my abs, pecs, and biceps, he makes me work out with free weights. Then for my quads, calves, and hamstrings, I do leg lifts or squats. Sounds like you're really getting into shape. So at the beginning of the dialogue, the friends were trying to decide what to do. And one friend said, do you want to go catch a movie? That's right. So to catch a movie. Do you want to go catch a movie? It sounds funny because, you know, catch means to hold something in your hands after someone throws it. Right. So throw and catch. But here, it doesn't mean to, to, to actually hold something in your hands. It mm. means, do you want to go see a movie right exactly so it's a very informal colloquial way of saying hey do you want to go to the movies do you want to go see a movie maybe not like a yeah serious date or something just for fun do you want to go catch a movie that's right let's go catch a movie all right so obviously we can't go to the movies because we got to go to the gym and we have to go to the gym because our personal trainer will get on our case the personal trainer will get on my case if i don't go all right, so someone will get on my case if I don't do this. Mm -hmm. So this this is an interesting way of saying my personal trainer will criticize me or will be angry with me if I don't do this. That's right. So you can use it with, for example, your parents. Your parents are always getting on your case because you don't clean your room. Yeah, my mom gets on my case when I don't tell her where I'm going when I go out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means to criticize, to give you a hard time, to get angry at you, or even maybe yell at you. But you can change the pronoun. So he gets on my case, but I can get on your case. That's right. right? So just remember that someone gets on someone else's case. That's mm -hmm. where the person goes. And of course, if you want to tell that person to stop bothering you, you just say, get off my case. All right, so he's on her case. Get off my case. That's right. And now to finish things off, the whole reason why we're going to the gym is because we want to get in shape. All right, great phrase here, to get in shape. This is something a lot of people like to do in the new year. Mm -hmm. So they say, okay, it's a new year. I want a new body. I'm going to get in shape. That means I will lose weight, build some muscle, mm -hmm. and start to feel good. That's right. So we want to get in shape. Very good. Let's listen to our dialogue one last time. Do you want to go catch a movie tonight? I can't. I have to go to the gym. Come on, you can go tomorrow. Just skip it today. It's not as if you're going to get in trouble. Actually, I will. I'm working out with a personal trainer that gets on my case if I don't go. I like it because it makes me feel more obligated to go and get healthy. That's cool. Does your personal trainer basically teach you how to work out? Yeah. He makes a workout plan depending on the areas I want to work on or the muscles I want to build. Like, for example, in order to get better muscle tone in my abs, pecs, and biceps, he makes me work out with free weights. Then for my quads, calves, and hamstrings, I do leg lifts or squats. Sounds like you're really getting into shape. All right, so going to the gym, getting a personal trainer is a, what do you think, is a good idea or a bad idea? I think for some people who have a hard time getting motivated, so people who don't like to go to the gym, mm -hmm. it's a great idea. Right. Because having another person push you can really help. I think for other people who are are already pushing themselves, mm -hmm. it's not as helpful. I think also if you just start out going to the gym, I think you should get a personal trainer for the first couple of weeks. You know, because you, you really have to understand and learn what you're doing and the purpose of that exercise and, you know, figure out how many sets, how many repetitions. All this is very important because some people just go and they, they overwork it. They do, and they don't know how to use the machines or the mm -hmm. weights, and you can actually harm yourself. Right. You, can, you can, you know, pull a hamstring or something if you don't know what you're doing. So for people who've never learned how to exercise, maybe it's a good idea, like you say. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a very interesting thing. Actually, gyms as well, very popular nowadays, especially with the holidays passing. You know, people gain some holiday weight. You got to go back to the gym to lose that weight. That's right. So let us know. Do you go to the gym? If so, what parts of your body? do you like to focus on mm -hmm. our website is englishpod.com all right we'll see you guys there bye bye the english pod audio review listen to the meaning then say the vocabulary word
Let's try that faster. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. 